Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft. This podcast is the full show from today's episode of Undisputed from start to finish. They've got a busy slate, so skip Shannon. Let's get to it. Welcome to Undisputed. We are live from L.A. I'm Jenny Taft. Here with Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp. Mm. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Did you check on Back LeBron? Out. I need to know if you checked on him yesterday. I want to make sure he's still among the living after that Jalen Brown Prince dunk. <laughs> is he okay? Is he going to show up at the Garden tonight? Did you check on him? You know what happens at the Garden. What do superstars, what do stars do at the Garden? Madison Square Garden, what do they do, Skip? DNP body bag. <laughs> <laughs> right? You got your warm over. You were waiting on this for the longest. Mm. Yeah, he's waiting. You know, mm. it worked. It worked. We have another packed <laughs> show today. Are the Cowboys beginning to panic yeah. for their Dak Prescott mm. negotiations? Yeah. And what can we expect from Zion Ooh. Williamson's big NBA debut finally tonight? But first, guys, we do have to talk about the latest with Antonio Brown. <sighs> Brown and his personal trainer allegedly attacked the driver of a moving truck yesterday. Brown's trainer was charged with one count of felony burglary and battery. Police say A.B. was present at the time of the incident, but they have yet to contact the former receiver to question him. The investigation is currently ongoing. So, Shannon, this is the latest Mm -hmm. with A.B. And how will it impact his NFL future? Skip, I think he's just making it hard and harder for him on himself to get back into the league. Um, if you if you look at it, it's kind of like Skip. You know, a lot of times when a person gets charged with something, they throw a whole bunch of charges. So that way, if we don't get you with something, we'll make something stick. Mm-hmm. A B, this stuff is piling up. So even if the sexual allegation thing is to proven to be untrue. You've done so many other things. What is the NFL supposed to do? They're going to end up suspending you for this. Now, it says that he was present. Did he participate? You know, I, it's, it's still a little... They, I, I guess he did because they're trying to make contact with him. Uh, uh, TMZ is reporting that the police are preparing a warrant for his, for his arrest, arrest. Correct. And his trainer is already charged with felony, felony battery and burglary, which I don't quite understand. If did he steal the truck? Did, uh, took something from the driver of the, the truck. moving truck. Well, I, was it, his, was it his, his, uh, his kid's mother? She came and got some stuff and he took it out of the I, truck? I, I don't know, but when you get charged with felony yes, it's a serious. battery, you, you, you beat this guy up. Yes. Skip, look, it's one thing to be a bad teammate. Everybody's not going to be the perfect teammate. Everybody's not going to be Tom Brady and everybody like you and get along with you. But now he's engaging in criminal activity. Now, the NFL, look, there have been a lot of bad teammates in the NFL. But when you step outside of that and start engaging in this, this is where I think the NFL is going like, hold on, wait a minute now. Now, out of sight, Skip, right now, look, they got a centennial celebration. They're trying to do the best job they possibly can to make sure the 49ers and the Chiefs goes off in Miami without a hitch. Yep. Antonio Brown is the last thing on the commissioner's mind. Correct. But I tell you what. The first chance that he gets to sit down, he's like, okay, so this is what you've been doing. Hmm. Skip, we, we're starting to see activity from A.B. coming with greater and greater regularity and with greater and greater venom. Yep. Now, we just saw last week this activity that took place with his kid, with, his, with his, uh, the mother of his kids. And we thought that was like, okay, well, how much lower can he go? And then now it's being reported that he and as a trainer attacked a, a moving truck driver. Skip, we just talked about and we saw it on video yesterday, the Lante West situation. I'm afraid A.B. is heading down a path and maybe he doesn't realize it. Yep. And maybe he's too close to realize it. But he's heading down a path he doesn't want to go in. Mm. And eventually there's going to be no turning back for them. And I said this last week, Skip, I don't believe he's hit rock bottom yet. He hasn't. Because you know what? The last thing football related we can remember, was in December. He had a workout for the Saints. And what did they say, Skip? It was unbelievable. He caught everything. He ran tremendous routes. Therein lies why someone, even through all of this, will give him an opportunity because he's immensely talented. But A.B. is heading down a path, Skip. I'm afraid right now it's going to end and very badly for him. And I hate Mm -hmm. to say that, but I just wish someone can talk to him. But who's the person that can talk to him and who's the person that A.B. would listen to at Mm. this point? 
just after everything you just said, and I, I want to remind our viewers that you played this game for a long time, mm -hmm. so you know w w what it's about. I covered this game for even longer than you played it. I know what it's about. I know how this league reacts. And I'm just afraid we're about to see the end of Antonio Brown mm -hmm. because I'm pretty sure he's not going to be allowed to play football next year. There's too many. I'm about to run through <laughs> just the, the litany of incidents, accusations, issues that he has faced off the field mm -hmm. as well as on the field. And to me, I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like this long, steady self-destruction right. of a fall that he is undergoing right before your very eyes Correct. so publicly. Delonte West, it was more off camera. Right. It was more off radar. Mm -hmm. Nobody was really following his precipitous fall. And he wasn't <laughs> chronicling it for everybody to uh, see uh, his precipitous yeah. fall. Well said. <laughs> this man lives on social media. And to me, he's becoming a victim, again, of social media. But the totality of this, for me, and I hope I'm not overreaching here, it's starting to feel O.J.-esque to me. Now, obviously, O.J. Simpson, we, most of us believe, murdered two people. Mm -hmm. So A.B. has not murdered anybody, though it sounds like he had a hand in beating the holy you-know-what out of this man for whatever reason we don't know. Right. But the totality of this, the fall from grace of an Antonio Brown who, unlike Delonte, Antonio's a superstar. Yes. In the heart of his prime. Yes. And he has a magnetic personality that can translate into beloved. Mm -hmm. Where I've been around him a good, good bit. Mm -hmm. He's got... An, a, just a billion watt smile. Mm -hmm. He's yes. fun to be around. Mm -hmm. So did O.J. Simpson, who I knew very well. But in A.B.'s case, he kept self-destructing in spite of, of falling from one great situation to another to another because I just want everybody to get what's just happened. <laughs> He was a superstar for the cornerstone NFL franchise, Pittsburgh Steelers, catching passes from a top five or seven or ten quarterback yeah. at Ben Roethlisberger, Correct. right? Yes. And you can't ask for a much better situation because all they did was throw it. It was the flying circus featuring Antonio yes. Brown, Correct. right? Yes. And that self-destructed, and I'm going to run through that in just a second, but he landed right on his feet with the Oakland Raiders heading toward Las Vegas. And a guy that loved him, John Gruden. Loved him! When John Gruden was members coming 84! You're going to lead this league in energy, we saw in Hard Knocks, right? They gave him a big new deal on top of the deal that you said Pittsburgh shouldn't give him in 2016, and they did. Yep. And then they, after Pittsburgh made him the highest paid wide receiver, Oakland said, mm, we'll, we'll double down on that. We're going to also once again make him the highest paid receiver. Yep. Boom! He comes in in a hot air balloon, and then you know the rest of the story. We'll run through that in just a second. But the point is, he had it in the palms of his hands. Yes. And then, after self-destructing there, he winds up with Tom Brady and Bill Belichick. Mm -hmm. And Brady embraces him via social media. Mm -hmm. I love this guy. Yep. I've got my guy, and here we go. And it was week two, September 15th, that he played for Tom Brady at back in Antonio's hometown of Miami. Miami. Correct. Mm -hmm. Site of this year's Super Bowl. We'll be there next week. And I'm thinking at that point, here come the Patriots. Brady finally got his next Randy Moss. Right. And at that point, the defense looked so good and the offense looked just about as good as ever yeah. that I'm thinking... Miami, here they come. Right. I'm thinking we're going to see them back in Miami. Right. And I would suggest to you, and we'll never know the end of this, if Antonio could have stayed afloat with the New England Patriots, that they would have at least made it to the AFC Championship right. game. And I believe it would have been at home, probably against Patrick Mahomes and company. Probably right. I don't know if they could have won it or not, but with A.B., I would have given him a shot. Yes. He would have changed everything on an offense that became 
pathetic to watch, mm -hmm. obviously, because Edelman became a broken down shell of himself. He had surgery yesterday on his shoulder. Mm -hmm. But the point was, Antonio would have changed life mm -hmm. in New England. And then what happened? Well, well but, but guess what? What if what if they had at least made it to the FC Championship game? Then does Tom Brady finish out his career with New England? It, does the it, dynasty sort of stay intact? Mm -hmm. I believe the end of the Patriots dynasty as we knew it was about three days after the game that he played. Right. And you know what happened? He sent a threatening text to his second accuser of that sexual, Thursday. Yes. And Robert Kraft said, okay. That's too much even for me because they've had a long history of trying mm -hmm. troubled players Rehab, in New England, yes. right? Mm -hmm. But they said, okay, that's, we're, we're out there. Right. And then Antonio immediately via social media burned that bridge because he took a shot at Robert Kraft. Right. So he had the Steelers, the Raiders, and the Patriots here, here, and how about here? Take our money. You can have it. You can have it all. You, what receiver could ask for? It's like, I've gone to heaven. I've, then I've gone to another heaven. And then I've gone to the greatest heaven ever yeah. for a receiver. I got Tom Brady loving me. Yeah. And they need me badly. They need me worse than they've ever needed a receiver in their history. Yes. Right? Yep. How can you blow up three situations, but he managed to do just right. that? Play with two of the top five or six quarterbacks in the league. And he said, nah. I'm good. Okay, so just briefly to run through his slow but steady fall, it started with going Facebook Live when we, we barely even knew what Facebook Live was I, I in, in the locker room. Right. Correct. After they won a playoff game in Kansas, Kansas City. City. Correct. They won it 18 to 16 up in the nighttime cold, cold. up in Arrowhead. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Yep. Mike Tomlin is speaking, and AB's off to the side going Facebook Live, talking to his peeps. Mm -hmm. And you can hear Tomlin's speech, and he's taking shots at those sorry patriots. Mm -hmm. I'm cleaning up the language. Sure. Remember that? Yeah. And you said, you just broke a rule. Yeah. That was it for me. That was it. And Shannon Chuck, we're at the Super Bowl, and we had Antonio come on. And you were adamant, I'm sorry, I'm out. Really? I'm out, bro. Yeah, I'm out. And one month after his appearance on our show at the Houston Super Bowl 2016 season, mm -hmm. Super Bowl, early 2017, the Pittsburgh Steelers said, Shannon, we're, uh, we're in because <laughs> we, we're going to make him the highest paid receiver in football. OK, and here we go. Then it starts And a couple of months pass after that. And guess what? In the draft, the Pittsburgh Steelers late in the second round. They took this kid named Juju Smith-Schuster from the University of Southern California. Mm -hmm. Aha! Mm -hmm. That's the beginning of the end of A.B. in Pittsburgh right. because he did not like that. Right. And obviously Juju became such a threat to him that once Juju got voted the MVP of two that was it. seasons ago, that's, that's it. That's it. Right? Yep. And it got so bad at the end in that last week in Pittsburgh, remember? Mm -hmm. Reportedly, he threw a football at Big Ben at, at the end of a Wednesday practice. And it was so bad that he didn't practice the rest of the week. Right. And then he showed up Sunday for the final game against the Bengals at home. And Coach Tallman sent him home. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was the end of him in Pittsburgh. But he lands on his feet in Oakland. He gets a big new deal. And right out of the box, for all to see on Hard Knocks, is cryotherapy. He has gone to France, and he has frostbitten his feet. Yes. And you thought it was maybe the dumbest thing you'd ever heard. Yes. Yes. Correct? I, because I know, Skip, look, I've seen blisters. And you've yeah. seen blisters with guys, you know, okay, you're not used to wearing cleats, and you have your ankles, your feet, your ankles taped, Skip. And so, you know, running the planet. So your feet got to get used to that. You have little blisters. I'm like, like that, though? Like that? I mean, it's like... It, his whole bottom feet, and come to find out. I don't know if you've ever done cryo skip, but the thing is is that you have on cotton underwear, but they want your skin completely dry because it's minus 180. So any wet, you will get frostbitten in a matter of seconds. Okay. And he misses the first two weeks of camp practice with scorched feet or frostbitten <laughs> yes. feet, however you want to put it. And uh, concurrently, 
he is filing a grievance against the NFL because they have banned the helmet that he loves. And he makes this a huge issue that nobody else in the league is making an issue of. And a whole bunch of great players have lost the helmet they've loved. They grandfathered him they as did. they did Tom Brady, they, they did. as they did Aaron Rodgers, but said no longer will you be allowed to wear your own helmet. So then he just <sighs> takes off from camp for no explained reason, and they fine him $40,000. And that's when Mike Mayotte, the GM, the new GM, stood up before the media and said he's either going to be all in or all out. Right. Remember that? Yes. And then it winds up a game, a preseason game, against the Packers in Winnipeg, and you kept raising the issue. First, he, he, he misses the walkthrough in the hotel. He, he decides, I'm not going to the walkthrough. <laughs> it's downstairs. In all you have to room. do is go down the That's elevator. It. And he says no. And then it, it disintegrates into uh, next week on the practice field. He gets into it with Mike Mayock and launches into a profane <laughs> tirade in which he calls Mike Mayock a cracker. One of his favorite words. That's easy to be with his yep. word. That's one of his words. And here we go. And the Raiders say, we are out. And they fine him. And they say, we don't owe you any more money. Right. We're going to get out from under this. You, you, we are going to invalidate your contract. Because that, by finding him for conduct detrimental to the team, Correct. it automatically voided, it voided the guarantee. The so basically, Skip, he was going to be playing week to week. Okay. <laughs> so... <laughs> then he goes on YouTube and posts, he's using all different forms uh -huh. of media, and he posts the private conversation he had with John Gruden. Yes. Just to defend himself and say, look what John was saying to me, which is another sort of locker room violation Thank of the you. code, right? Yes. Okay, and then meanwhile, we've got all kinds of things happening off the field. Just to remind everybody, there was the incident, This I'm going back to October 2018, remember, down in, South Beach. Mm -hmm. He owned a, a condo right. there and he threw things off the 14th floor balcony, things like furniture. Mm -hmm. And he was accused of doing so, quote, without regard for human life because one piece of furniture landed within a couple of feet of a 22 month old boy. Scary. And it was scary and it was bad. And he obviously got sued for that. And then there was an incident with another mother of some of his other children. And he shoved her, according to her, mm -hmm. to the ground. And then there was he, a missed court date because he was caught with, uh, with, the speeding. with speeding. He was going over 100 miles an hour. That was back in Pittsburgh. And he missed that, but he was found guilty. Then he got sued by a celebrity chef for $38,000 that he said he was owed for meals during the Pro Bowl weekend, and then he got sued by another personal trainer for $7,000 for services provided that weren't paid for, on and on and on. And then all of a sudden, we get to two women who have now accused him of all kinds of sexual assault. And the first accuser was a former trainer of his who accused him also of rape. And that's a civil suit that was filed. And then there's a second allegation for, of sexual misconduct right. from an artist that right. he had worked right. with who had come to his home. And those are still pending. So they have spoken to the commissioner of the National Football League, and we still haven't heard a word about either of those. So, so those are just, they're, they're still pending and that should, out there. Skip, and that should tell you that he wasn't playing this year. Because mm -hmm. they, haven't, they haven't even responded. Yes, we've talked to the individuals that were involved. Because remember, Skip, A.B. was pushing this off. I ain't going to talk. I'm not going to talk. Well, I don't know how you think this situation is going to get resolved if you're not going to come in and tell your side of the story. And eventually, reluctantly, he went up and told his side of the story. But the commission's like, okay, we good. We'll follow back up to you sometime in March or April. But this will not be heard. You will not deter. Because they didn't want him on the field in, in the centennial anniversary of the NFL. That wasn't going to happen. Once, the, once the, uh, the Patriots released him, he was done for, he was done for 2019 season. Hmm. That was it. That was a wash. So for you and for me on this show, for Jenny, we, we all start to reach Antonio burnout because it seems like every other day on this show, we're discussing another incident, mm -hmm. right? And you use the terms, it's sad, it's inexplicable. Why doesn't he get help? Why doesn't he seek therapy? Finally, his agent, the, the agent to all the troubled stars, <laughs> Drew Rosenhaus, finally says, I'm out, but he leaves it with a qualifier, unless you go get help. Right. Right? Right. Well, obviously. That's somebody close to him. That's good. We, we're looking at this from a distance, and we think he needs to get help. Here's somebody that has a dealing with AB, probably on a day-to-day -day basis. 
saying, you know what, I'm, a, I'm enough. Enough is enough until you get your situation resolved, until you get the help that you need, I'm out. Now you get that, I don't have a problem coming back being your representative. So somebody that's even closer to him than you and I looking from a distance believes he needs to get help. Well, damn. That's something. good enough for me. It says something. <sighs> so then I read an ESPN report that many of his neighbors in his gated community are all saying that they're sick and tired because it's been something uh, almost every day. There's been an incident. With police. Because his, yeah. 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 the police there, they're like, hold on. Is this the a neighborhood? police have been called four times in the last X days. Yeah. It's and in this a is short a gated period of time. community. Yes. So you're not looking for any of that. <sighs> You want to talk about out of control self destruction? Mm -hmm. And yet, he did get the work out with the Saints. It did go, according to all the reports, incredibly well. Mm -hmm. And he turned right around and called it and dismissed it as a publicity stunt. Okay? So, do you not want to play anymore? What, what are you doing? All this behavior is saying, I don't want to play. Right. When all he ever says is, I do want to play, right? We had one incident when, where he did go off and say, I'm sick and tired of the NFL and I'm, I quit. Yeah. And then please take me back. <laughs> but that's, that's the thing, Skip, is that he thought that he could, for so long, he was able to play on his rules. Pittsburgh allowed him to be late for meetings and be late for they practice did. and behave in a manner that they knew they should not tolerate, mm. but they did. And they say, Mike Tomlin, uh, 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 famous quote is, we tolerate you until we can replace you. Mm -hmm. Well, they tolerated, they stomached him as long as they could. And when they could no longer stomach him, Skip, they're like, enough is enough. Enough is enough. Probably the, 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 the calling being that, even, even calling being that in, uh, when he tried to change the music. Cracker, yeah. The, yep. the, uh, the mm -hmm. kicking of the football. At some point in time, Skip, it's like, look, Anybody that, that has animals, or let's just say for a snake, if you feed it, Skip, it's going to grow. Mm -hmm. Well, they fed A.B. the thing that would make his ego grow. They gave him money. They gave him more passes. And the more you fed that, the bigger he became. He, he, felt, he saw himself as equal to Ben as being untouchable. But you know, Skip, that really only applies to the quarterback. It's really the untouchable, especially if it's a quarterback of Ben Roethlisberger's ill. The best receiver, no matter who it is, be it OB, be it uh, Julio or Mike Thomas, they now have the same credence and the credibility, the the, the, uh, uh, the the credibility, mm -hmm. like a quarterback. Mm -hmm. Drew Brees ain't going anywhere. No, and that's the way it works, AB. Yeah, but AB, you bro, you got to get this under control, Skip. Mm -hmm. Look, there are only so many more times that the police are gonna pull, him. and then his erratic behavior, because that's what you know they don't know. All they know is a, a, a black man acting erratic. You don't get the benefit of the doubt, A.B., as most people. Ain't no talking in all this sudden move and then boom. Man, it was so sad, man. It didn't have to get to this. Well, the police athletic league gave him his donation back. Come That's on, how bad man. it got. Okay. Time out for this, A.B. This is enough, bro. Hey, th this, what just happened is serious business. Yes. He, I'm pretty sure he's going to get charged with this. Right. And... I'm also pretty sure he's not going to be allowed to play football another year. And you know and I know what happens when you miss effectively two years of football in your prime. Sometimes you just can't get it Skip. back. And plus, out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. Out of sight, out of mind. Mm. They don't want to be, look. But, Skip, and they need to stop saying, A.B. is not an NFL player. He's an ex. A.B. hadn't been in the NFL in a very long time. He's yeah. an ex-NFL player. Okay. He's the equivalent of Shannon Sharp, ex-NFL. You can't say Shannon, NFL or Shannon Sharp. No, ex. Fair That's enough. what A.B. is, ex. Okay. Wow. And he needs to understand that he's an ex. Yep. But he's behaving like he's on somebody's roster and he's catching <laughs> 100 passes a season for 13 on the yard, bro. Good point. You starting from the bottom. When you listed off that list, Skip, oh, it man. is long. And there is really no end in sight. I wish I had a way to wrap this. But I fear we'll go there again in a couple days and we'll oh, have yeah, an he'll update. Be back. So I don't have a, a solution oh, he, for ending the AB where, 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 where you say Super Bowl going to be? In Miami. And where is he? So he go, oh, oh, he going to try to upstage yeah, it. He going to do true. something. Yeah. Oh, he going to do something. We'll be back. i give it like two days. No mercy. Kawhi Leonard led the Clippers into Dallas to take on the Mavs in a game that would come down to the wire. Kawhi and Luka each put up 36-point double-doubles, but it was the claw who got the last laugh. The Clippers would win 110-107 thanks to a late three and two clutch free throws from Kawhi that sealed the game. Doc Rivers had high praise for his team after the game. Take a listen. Played up and down, you know. Um, you know, we, we tr 
trying to figure it out with all the injuries and all the stuff. Uh, but we just hang together. You know, it's it's just a great group. They they really are. They they talk. They meet. They um, I mean, they do everything that you want a, a um, you know a team, a good team, a team that has aspirations to do. Well, Whew. Skip, Whew. in your opinion, who had the wow. better game, Kawhi or Luca? By the way, did you see Doc? He's drenched with sweat. It was a wild finish, and, and he was drained from it, but like giddy drained. Yeah. He was ecstatic about what he saw from the character of his <laughs> basketball team. He seems excited. And that team did not have Paul George last night, and it did not have Patrick Beverly for the whole second half because he had a little True. groin issue, and they said, we just... We always err on the it, side of caution. Yeah. If it is the 17th year? Hmm. Why Pat Beverly getting the wrong injury? Well, mm. come on. I, oh, mm. so groins happen. Oh, is you that don't, what you're oh, talking so about? Oh, so you don't necessarily have to oh, be just – okay, I'm just making – that's okay. Go ahead, Skip. Go oh. ahead. Go ahead. So, <laughs> obviously, even though the numbers look about the same – in fact, if, if I just go off the – the overall final stat sheet, I could say Luca had the better game because right. they both had 36 points. But then I look at Luca's line, and he had 10 rebounds and nine assists, and, mm -hmm. and Kawhi only had two assists, had 11 rebounds. But if we look harder at what happened, we see that all of the plays were made by Kawhi Leonard. Mm -hmm. So he had the better game because his team obviously ended up right. winning the game. And Correct. if we could just see – what looked like was the dagger three. In fact, the Clippers announcer referred to it as a dagger, which was almost the kiss of death because it really <laughs> wasn't a dagger. But Kawhi made this three. This is with about a minute and 16 left, and that was cold-blooded. And guess what? That was the only three he made all night, and he was one for nine. So I will give you that. He did not have a good shooting night. But then this is what happened at the very end of the game when it was time to go to the free throw line and slam the door shut. He made Two more free throws, boom, boom, and that was 11 out of 12 for the game, which brings me to Luka. Again, I don't hate Luka Doncic. He's still 20 years of age, but I cannot stand it when anybody invokes the name of Larry Bird, hey, Larry Joe. In including the man across <laughs> from me, because there were times last night when Luka looked more like Harry Bird. <laughs> Harry Bird. You remember Harry Bird? He I played do. D3s and went over and I think he played pro ball in Greece and wound up in China. That, yes. Remember that guy, Harry Bird? Well, this guy is more like Harry Bird too much of the time because I want to remind everybody, Luca is now shooting 32.7% from three, and this is going to play when I show you what happened in the game. That ranks 131st of 149 NBA three-point qualified shooters. And he also is shooting 78% from the free throw line, which is not LeBron bad, but uh, it's still not. Larry Joe Bird was a 90% free throw shooter, and Luca ranks 72nd of 114 qualified free throw shooters. Can we see what happened in the first half on one of Luca's free throws, please? Is this Bird-esque to you, please? Luca, first half, it's up, and it's... Short, Ooh. nothing but net, as in it just barely bottom ticked the, the bottom of the net. <laughs> Luca, how can you do that? I what are you doing? It happens. Hey, Larry Bird never did that one time <laughs> in his whole career. 90%. Luca, no, Ooh. no. <laughs> then can we see what happened with five minutes left in the game? And the game was tied, and Kawhi had just made a big basket for the Clippers. And it's nip tuck back and forth. And Luca comes down to shoot a three, and it's up, and it hits nothing but nothing. <laughs> it's an air ball wide right by about three feet. And I'm saying, what are you doing? Larry <laughs> Joe Bird never did that, but Harry Bird, he, he does that on occasion. Oh, you can't trust Harry all the time. Yeah, you can. So then Luca did hit a big three late in the game to cancel that Kawhi three. Right, he came yeah. right back down and hit one. But then what happened with 16 seconds left? Luca, they, they get the ball on a, it's a wild, frantic play, and the ball gets swung around to Luca at the top. Here we go. The ball's kicked around. Oh, look, wait, whoa, 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 wait, wait a second. Luca's got a wide open three from the top of the key. This is a Larry Joe Bird special where you just go up and shoot that. Mm -mm. And guess what? He went LeBron. He said, the better shot, the right basketball right. play is to kick it to Tim right. Hardaway Jr. Who was that? No, it's not. It's if you are that guy, you take that shot let to win let that game. Who's a better three-point shooter? Huh. 
Tim Hardaway Jr. or Luka Doncic? Statistically, I give you Tim Hardaway Jr. But who is the next Larry Bird? It's this guy. That's all I hear. And again, it's a runaway train. If he's that guy in a close game, and I watch all the Luka games, he is not great late in games. And he's getting a little gun shy because he had missed another three just before that. So my point is, you have to make that. And then what happens? Doc has him intentionally fouled by Landry Shamit when it's a three-point game with seven seconds left. And here he goes to the – he gets fouled by Shamit. This is when – they don't have a foul to give. They're just going to make him shoot the free throws because right. it's a three-point game. So he needs to make these two free throws to give them a chance. And the first one is up, and it barely hits the front of the rim. That's LeBron-esque. So if yeah, you want to say he's the next LeBron, I'll give you that. You got me. But in the end, this was a big game against a Clippers team down Paul George, down Patrick Beverly, and Kawhi Leonard took the game over. Both of them scored 11 points in the fourth quarter, but Kawhi's were more meaningful than Harry Burns. Skip, I, I, I mean, I, if you want me to come up here and, and, and argue against Kawhi, I can't. Um, last night, I mean, he was 12 of 29. Um, he, he wasn't efficient. Um, one of nine from the three-point line. But, Skip, we've seen this from Kawhi. You remember last year in Game 7, he was 16 of 39. Yep. But the shot that needed to be made, the shot that needed to be taken, he took it and he made it. And that's what the really good ones can do. Mm -hmm. They all have amnesia. Man, I've been missing all my shots tonight. And I'm going to make this one. Mm. That's what they can do. Skip, look, I don't believe there's been a a 20-year-old that's had more on their plate than Luka Doncic. Maybe Magic, maybe uh, uh, LeBron. But you got to realize, Skip, he's still 20. Okay, I'm, I'm feeling sorry over here for him because he does not deserve the, the expectations being heaped on his shoulders. He's not that guy, you do not know, yet. You do know Larry was uh, at uh, Indiana State okay. at 20. Okay, fair he enough. He was playing NBA basketball, yeah. Jenny. But what happened the minute he stepped on an yep. NBA floor? Yep. You knew. Yes. I don't know. Yeah, you know. I do oh, not you know. know he's I'm true. sorry. Skip, look. I don't know why you keep on trying to do this. I mean, Luca is asked to do everything. He's 29, 10, and 9 at the age of 20. Yeah. And the offense, everything, there's nothing going on in which he doesn't have his hand in. Now, Prazingis, it was his first game back. He looked rusty. He did. He now, was he, 417. I'll give you that. Skip, he was out longer than AD. And we saw how rusty AD looked after being out only two. Luca's been out like three weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, not Luca, excuse me. Prazingis has yep. been out like three weeks. Okay. And then he comes and goes. I mean, I, I, I'm more uncertain of him than I am Luca. I know what Luca goes. Luca's a superstar. Skip, I, I'm, I hate to disagree with you. But I'm going to give Kawhi his, his props. He was unbelievable when he needed to be. And that's what the good one can do. You disregard them shooting 30% or 35, 40% from the field. When they need to take a shot, when they need to make a shot, he, like so many of the other greats, can do that. And that's what he was able to do last night. Uh, Luka got his. Uh, it's kind of tough on him to try to have to guard Luka because if you're going to put all, put him on Luka, you're going to zap some of his energy on the offensive end. They needed all 36 last night. He had one of those nights, Skip, where he goes from seven. From Kawhi. From Kawhi, yes, yeah. they did. Well, they, they needed obviously. everything. So, Shamit stepped up big. Shamit was huge for them last night. He, he's a very good unsung player for them. Yes. So, the bigger takeaway from last night, obviously, to, to me, it was more about what Luka couldn't do at home in Dallas. Mm-hmm. But the bigger takeaway was, Doc, is, he is buying into his team. For sure. And Again, this whole season, we'll see if Zion can change this. It, it seems like it's sort of degenerated into the two L.A. teams. It is. Who's better? Mm-hmm. And they're about to meet for a third time next Tuesday night. We will be at South Beach at the Super Bowl, but we will talk about it on Wednesday show. Yeah. You better believe it. We might just come right out of the box yeah, talking about bra- it. Yeah, the bra- put his triple dub on okay. him. Well, I don't know what's wrong with Paul George because he's got a hamstring. Is it worse whoa, than Whoa, 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 whoa. What year is this for Paul George? Oh. It better be year 18 or year 19 because huh. he missed you. Skip, what, what's my favorite saying? Mm. If you limp into the season, how you limping out? How you coming up out of it? Mm. Limping. Okay. Now, all I know is my guy. My guy had a groin. First time he's had an injury like that, Jenny, in, in 16 seasons. Oh, yeah. Whoa, he's over. He old. I ain't never seen a guy this old. Who pulls their groin? Who does this? I'm just trying to figure out why Paul George got this injury. Mm. Patrick Beverly got a groin injury. Is Patrick Beverly old as LeBron? 
Mm-mm. Oh. What have I called LeBron many times? No, 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 no. The most durable superstar I have ever watched. No. Have. And so it was shocking that he had a groin pull that kept him out for two months? Mm-hmm. Really? Well, that's kind of a year 16 kind of an injury to me. No. What happened was he pulled his groin. Mm. He got it good. He probably, he didn't he tell you he heard a pop, but you're talking about he hear no pop. Mm. Ain't nobody else here. That's what mm. you said. The, the only man, pop I know coaches the Spurs. The man said, right? the man said he heard mm. a pop. Mm. So that means he tore something. Well, I hope that Paul George didn't hear a pop because I would rather tear my groin than tear my hamstring because the hamstring's the biggest muscle in the body. And if it goes, I'm talking about if it rips, yeah. you are done done. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, you, you, ain't, you ain't jumping. You ain't doing all okay. that movie. So you better hope, I'm knocking on wood for Paul George, but you better hope that he's got a serious injury because if well, he doesn't, your team is in trouble because I do love the mental toughness of these Clippers, especially with Patrick Beverly on the floor. They're just a better defensive team than the Lakers are. And we had Byron Scott, former great Laker. He bleeds a little bit of purple and gold, but he's saying that he favors the Lakers just because a- the Clippers G- don't have anybody who can they guard don't. AD. And yet last night, whew, Montrez, he was beastly last night. He he is hard to deal with yeah. underneath and even on the perimeter. Yeah. He flies all over the floor. Mm-hmm. He will cause AD problems. I just like the mental toughness. I like the physical toughness of the Clippers over the Lakers. And I like it that they're coached by Doc Rivers and your team isn't. It's well, as simple as that. It's probably a game that the Dallas Mavericks should have won because anytime you can get Lou Williams and Trez Harrell going 10 of 22. Yep. I mean, twenty to thirty-two, mm-hmm. and you don't win that game. Yeah, Lou couldn't close last night. He just didn't have it, so it was up to Kawhi to close, and he did. He did. He did. But we don't need no closer tonight. Mm. We got this in the bag. Oh, really? It's tonight? in the morning. Huh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you mean as in the body bag? No, don't do that, Skip. It's in the body bag. Don't, don't do that, huh. Skip. It happens. It happens. Well, how can you LeBron... get crossed over, Skip? You remember how did Allen Iverson come on the scene? What did he do on national television? What did he do, Skip? Jordan mm-hmm. crossed him up, mm-hmm. had him out there like he was drunk. Mm. Mm. <laughs> that happens. Mm. If you play in the NBA, get, Skip, those guys One are good. One thing to get crossed over, it's, it's another. I guess a rookie. Wait, wait, did you see that? Wait, wait there second. it is again. Must we see It's a see body again? bag dunk. It's a dunk. <laughs> Look at this. Poor LeBron. <laughs> how do you recover psychologically from that? What do you that? mean how you recover? Seriously. Well, Kawhi did quite fine. Because remember Kawhi missed that free throw in game six? Huh. You remember he missed that game and you got 90%. Do you remember he missed the free throw that left the door open? He was 17 years no, old. Yeah, he was. <laughs> Ron had the day off yesterday. He'll be just fine. Yeah. I don't I know. You know how LeBron is. With, think, a, day, with I, a day of rest? I think he's going to need a load memory. management. I think it's triple dub. Triple dub for a case right now. Yeah, he's, he needs psyche management tonight. Triple dub off. right now for a case. Triple dub right now. Heck no. What do you mean? It's the Knicks at the Garden? Yeah, the yes. Garden. He'll show up. Yeah, he could... He, what, 10, 10 and 10? Is that going to be no, your triple no, no, double? No, 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 He'd be at least, yeah. 20, at least 25. Gonna, at least 25, 12, yeah. and 11. Do it? Huh. Not tonight? No. Right. Who, who's he going to dunk on tonight? Kevin Knox or something? RJ Barrett? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Mitchell Robinson? Somebody oh. catching it. <laughs> Somebody catching it. All right, all right. No mercy. <laughs> How about we talk about Skip's other team? How about the Knox? The Cowboys. Yeah. You know what? They are still working on getting Dak Prescott signed to a new contract. Stephen Jones said during the season that they were real close to signing Dak, but a deal never got done. And yesterday, Stephen said that it's, quote, urgent to sign Dak and that it's the Cowboys' number one priority. Shannon, Mm -hmm. you're first. What is going on here? Skip, how can you say it's a top priority? when you haven't gotten a deal done. <laughs> and you know it's the top priority. Skip, you, Skip has told me the quarterback position <laughs> is the most important, the most valuable position agree. in all of pro sports. So you, you finally learned I something. Say, that, was, that was Skip Bayless telling me. We can all agree on that, right? <laughs> Skip, listen. What Jerry and Steven has tried to do is that they tried to sow poison seeds and they started this at the Combine, that if Dak was a team player, he would give us a discount. He would play because the Cowboys, I mean, it's an honor to play quarterback for the Cowboys, and it sets you up for the rest of your life. Well, Dak says, you know what? My next contract going to set me up. Mm -hmm. And if I want to do paid appearances as a former Cowboy quarterback, that would be well within my purview. But if I don't, and I want to just sit on my couch because I've made over $200 million Mm -hmm. as being quarterback of the Cowboys, that's what I'm going to do. Skip, it's like almost like Dak is a daredevil. Now, Dak does, you know, he does these things that, you know, like, get paid for him. Let's just say 
He said, you know what, Jerry? I'd be willing to swim across this, this pit of alligators for 100000 Jerry says, no, I'll pay you seventy five. dollars Jerry, I want 100000 Jerry says, no, I'll give you seventy five. dollars So Dak says, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to swim across there. He gets across unscathed. Jerry says, uh, what about that 75000 Dak said, I told you it was 100000 So, Skip, it's hard for me to believe that Dak Prescott is going to take a discount after he navigated the NFL season and he came out the other side unscathed. Mm. Now, here's what's going to happen. Russell, oh, well, yeah, Russell Wilson is the mm-hmm. highest paid at about $36 million. Yep. And you got a lot of guys, Skip. You got wins and you got golf at about $32.5, $33. And then you got uh, uh, Aaron Rodgers in there. But guess what's coming down the pipeline? There's a guy that's in the Super Bowl. That's about to get $200 million. And there's another guy that he beat on the way to get to the Super Bowl that's about to get mid-30s to almost in that, uh, uh, high 30s. That's Deshaun Watson. Mm. So these average salaries are going up. Yeah. You see, Dak says, I've already given you a discount. It's called the first four years of my deal. Mm. Where I made $4 million and Winston Golf made $28, $29 million. That was the discount. Mm. Now, you could have came to me. See, Skip, I told you what he should have done is go to Dak early, maybe like year three. Say, Dak, we got $100 million for you. We're going to give you $75 million to sign. People would have thought you was crazy because Dak would have been unproven. Mm. But $20, $22 million, $25 million right now looks like a bargain, doesn't it? Because mm. you're going to have to pay double. Mm. Now, because he's seen, Skip, you went and golf got deals done early with year left on their deal. Dak says, I'm free. I'm up. I'm at the bare end. The ink is dry on that first four years. The ink, the, we had the period. Bing. Punctuation, Jenny. So you know what that means, Jerry? I got to get all this. Mm. Matt Ryan got $100 million fully guaranteed, totally guaranteed, and total guarantees. He got $94 million, Jenny, at the time of signing. So he walks in there and signed his name, Arthur Blake signed him a check for $94. Mm. He saw that Matt Ryan, older, got years on his contract. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers had two years left, Skip, and they give him that. And you want that. But what they're trying to do, and I told you this, I got it from a very, very reliable source. Hmm. The reason why this deal did not get done was Dak wasn't given a hometown discount. Mm. I think you've been getting that kind of, you got to get mm. that information too, haven't you? Mm. Oh, Dak Prescott. Sounds like you might have been talking to I ain't talking to nobody. <laughs> agent, maybe? I ain't talking to nobody. 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 I don't even know why I brought it up, Jenny. Oh. Yeah, it's none of my business. Interesting. Mm. Skip? <laughs> By the way, do you realize why Dak survived swimming across the pit of alligators? <laughs> Because he had maybe the best offensive line in football <laughs> knock him all out of the way. And yeah. he could just, just sort of backstroke. Yeah. He backstroke yeah, 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 yeah. all right? And that's what Dak said, yeah, and you paid him too. Mm. They got top five. Yeah. They top money at their position at the time Good of signing. Point. So before I launch on what I need to say about this, I want to remind our viewers once again that the man sitting across from me campaigning <laughs> for Dak to get his money often gave Dak Prescott Fs for his performances yes! this past year, yes! in which my Cowboys went eight and eight. Yes. And the coach got fired. Yes. And yet, my man across from me is campaigning for Dak Prescott to get $40 million no, a no, year. No, 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 not 40. 30, somewhere between 34 and 37. <laughs> oh, 30, oh, oh, <laughs> sue me. So you want him to get $37 million. Something like that. And yet you frequently gave him Fs for his performance. Yes. Bizarrely, you gave him an A for his performance at Detroit, a game they barely won over somebody yeah. named Jeff Driscoll. I don't know what happened, <laughs> but whatever. So now back to my issues here, and they are many. Stephen Jones has been saying a deal is urgent to get done for eight months. <laughs> He's been using the word urgent for the last eight months. And priority. Priority, urgent, priority, (laughs) urgent. Imminent, 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 urgent, imminent, priority. (laughs) Undone. It done. So, I'm going to say it again. I thought Jerry Jones was the sort of unsung MVP of the team a year ago that won a playoff game and came to L.A. and lost a playoff game because he went and got Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper is also up and deserves a contract. Problem. I thought Jerry Jones this year was the LVP of this team, (laughs) least valuable player for this team, because he blew this one badly. I told you all along, I thought, silly me, that Jerry would get a deal done with Dak before camp opened. Right. Because it just felt like it was time. It felt like it was a necessary evil, if you will, to get done. It's just something. It's part of the business. You just get it done. And you really felt that once they got Zeke. Under contract. Then, then I thought 
it was really urgent. Yeah, you said imminent. <laughs> like, because I thought, uh-oh, well, here we go toward game number one. Right. Opening day is coming. And I thought, what a great emotional rocket booster mm -hmm. to the locker room. Oh, we got Zeke done, and then we gave Dak his money. Right. And they would both be happy and healthy and going Ever into the season. After. Ever here we go, right? Didn't get done. <laughs> and then it didn't get done. And I believe Jerry still wanted to get it done, but he started stroking his chin thinking, my mm. guy's playing better than he's ever played before. Maybe it's because he's playing for a contract. Maybe I'll just sit back and stroke my chin and watch him take us all the way to Miami in the Super Bowl, and then I'll give him his money. But instead... They got off to a hot start, and then not, and then hot, and then not, and hot, and not, and eight and eight happened, and Jerry's still sitting there stroking his chin, saying, uh, I don't know now, because the agent keeps saying, uh, uh, we've actually gone up. Yes. We, we've gone up. Yes. We, we want more. Yes. Skip, he's treating Dak like, like Dak's a, a, season, a seasonal object. You know, and they like like bikinis and, 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 and crop tops, you yeah, they're a little less in the wintertime. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Dak says, whoa, 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 oh, bro, so. I'm not a seasonal object. You're going to pay in full regardless. Every day. So Jerry needs to get out of this. And I believe one of the main reasons that Kellen Moore is calling these plays and they're going to stick with this offense is because of that guy. If you change offense, now he's not coming until you give him a deal. You change offenses and your quarterback's not there to hear that verbiage and that terminology because he's not coming, Skip. You know he's not coming. Put the franchise tag on him. He's showing up day one. So, to your point, I was shocked they hired Mike McCarthy like that. Mm -hmm. And then I was double shocked <laughs> that he announced he's keeping Kellen Moore as his play caller. Mm -hmm. Mike McCarthy is a play caller by trade. There were years in Green Bay he was regarded as the best play caller in football. Yep. Mm -hmm. And he's going to concede play calling and right. an all offensive strategy to, to Kellen. both Kellen and Dak. Like, yes. you keep doing what you do. Right. I'm out. You're out? And then he tries to sell us on, we're, we're still going to call it the West Coast offense, but I'm not changing any verbiage. Help me out. That ain't West Coast. Oh, okay, that's not West Coast. <laughs> You're not changing anything. And then yesterday at the Combine, he told USA Today, we're all of our senior bowl, you mean? Uh, I'm senior. What I, what I call combine. it? Combine. Uh, not the combine. The senior, senior bowl. bowl. Yeah, in Mobile. Right. Mm -hmm. Told USA Today, hey, all of our drastic changes will come on the defensive side of the ball. What if you told me regularly? What? How do you defend Aaron Rodgers for all of his years <laughs> and sort of non-playoff success in Green Bay? What do you always tell me? No defense. defense. Right. He had one. You say he had one defense right. in 2010. Right. right? Mm -hmm. Well. Is Mike McCarthy's calling card defense? No. No. So you're going to dramatically change the defensive side of the ball, except they say they're still going to keep the 4-3 instead of going to the 3-4 yeah. with Mike Nolan as the new coordinator. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to hear any of that because what do you know, Mike, about defense? <laughs> right? <laughs> right. You, you didn't exactly distinguish yourself on that side of the yeah, ball. Yeah, actually, your defenses were, weren't very good with except okay. for that one year. All and right. still, when you look at it, Dak is also looking at it. I give you a discount. I get hurt. Now what? Okay. You well, have to I, I agree. He has to factor. He, okay. he has to factor all that in, not just being the quarterback for the Cowboys, not just down way down the road 10, 15 years from now. Hopefully Dak plays another 10, 15 years if that's his choosing. But I can't, well, you know, hey, you know how they treat the Cowboys. Now I ain't worried about that. Mm. I, I, I get so it. I, I agree with you. I believe a condition of Mike McCarthy's taking the job was you will keep Kellen Moore mm -hmm. because then we won't have to rush Dak back into the fold That's to right. learn your new West Coast right. offense. We can drag this thing out, wait him out, sweat him out, and win. Uh, I don't blood. know. Let's get hey, what do I love about that, that young man? Mm -hmm. I love his backbone. Rest. I love his toughness, yes. mm -hmm. right? His yep. tenacity, mm -hmm. his playmaking. Mm -hmm. Well, he's about to turn all of that on Jerry. Yep. In these negotiations. He did. I mean, Skip, he, was, he still was 30 and 11. Yep. Like, okay, they didn't make the playoffs. But at the end of the day, you play quarterbacks on, on, on potential and moving forward. What do you believe that will be moving forward? Do you believe he will regress or you believe he will show even more progression than what he's shown in his first four? Okay, well, I believe in the latter, Okay, well, then, he, that, that, okay I, I, so I, I believe you have to give him a little more than Goff got and maybe a little more. That's 112 than, million right? for Goff. And a little more than Wentz got. Well, okay. Wentz got 108. Okay, so you got to give him a little more because uh, he's earned it to me. Okay. And he will continue to pay you back. Zeke, you might have overpaid. You just might have. He didn't give you the bang for the bucks he got. 
Dak gonna come in there with them old nice suits yeah. on, with them old Jet playbook. You know he go yeah. Jets playbook. Yeah. You gonna come in there with bow tied on? Yep. Hey Jerry, let me see what kind of check you write. Mm. Cause Jerry, Jerry said, Skip, you have no idea the size of a check I would I, write. I agree, <laughs> but there's also this thing out there called the franchise tag, and Jerry oh, might just sign, love, oh, sign a little thing love, that says I love, franchise I, tag. I love when guys get the franchise tag mm-hmm. when they play. They've done everything right. Yeah. On the field and off the field. And you say you love me, you believe in me. It's frustrating. Huh? I'm just fearing it's, it's going to become Dallas's version of Kirk Cousins. No good. Yeah. No good. Unhappy camper. Hey, Jack said, okay, go on the window. You believe Mike McCarthy gets you to a Super Bowl? You believe he can get you to Tampa? Cooper Rush, you're up. Yeah. You know this, hey, next man up, Jenny. Yeah. You hear everybody in sports say, next man up. Hmm. Cooper Rush, it's your turn. Tom Brady, it's your turn. Come on in. Uh, that's, what T- that's what T.O.'s been. I know. T.O. Oh, yeah. now you want to listen to what T.O. I love say. T.O. <laughs> I believe in T.O. Dak, you hear that, Dak? T.O. spouts that. wisdom. Dak, you hear that? Yeah. You hear that, Dak, right? The man said he wants Tom Brady to replace you. You want him? In a pinch. If they're going to curl Cousins <laughs> back, I think I'd rather have Brady. I hope it doesn't get to yeah, the Cousins situation. Too. We do not want that. No mercy. All right, guys, we are headed to Miami starting Monday. Undisputed and all of our FS1 shows will be live at Loomis Park on South Beach as we get ready for Super Bowl 54. If you're in the area, please come watch us live. How fun would that be? Mm. And in person, audience check-in starts at 8.30 a.m. And Mm. we guarantee a good show. Trust us. You don't want to miss it. How about this for some guest guys? Lil Wayne, Offset, Christian McCaffrey, Michael Irvin, Deion Sanders. When I saw that list, I was like, wait a second. Everyone's going to be in Miami. You guys excited? (laughs) I just died and went to Super Bowl heaven. (laughs) Trust me on this. Fox Sports has built a little Super Bowl city Mm -hmm. on South Beach. Mm -hmm. It's going to be the heartbeat of Super Bowl week. You have to be there because we're going to have virtual rock concerts out there. Yeah. I'm looking forward to this. I've never been to the Super Bowl. I I mean, I've never been a part of the week. I mean, me and and, and Weezy be pulling up together. We're going to just be coming in the night before. Oh, seriously? I mean, you can't, like, Tell everyone that that's what you're going to be doing. That's what I'm going to be doing. That's what I'm going to be doing. That's what I'm going to be doing. Somebody's going to be borrowing Wheezy's car for I you. already oh, you saw that post, yeah. Skip. Would you well, like we... to share with me? Because mm, nope, nothing looks nope, nice. Nope, nope, not well, yet. Jenny, we don't need no car. Me and Weezy going, we don't need no car. Is anyone going to invite me to hang out or hide my own? You good. You good. Good to know. Good to know. (laughs) After impressing the league during the preseason, Zion Williamson is set to make his NBA debut tonight against the Spurs. Zion has not only been rehabbing from a knee injury, but the Pelicans have also been working with the rookie on his mechanics when he jumps and lands in order to avoid future injury. So, Shannon, what do you expect from Zion tonight? I expect them to play him around 20 minutes, Skip. There's no need to push him in his first game back. You got, what, another 40 games to go. So let's try to keep him as healthy as we possibly can. Skip, I believe Zion will be good. <clears throat> He'll be good for, you know, some splash plays. That's what he is, Skip. Yeah, I agree. He's a highlight reel. Yep. Dunks, he's going to probably catch somebody. He's going to probably body bag somebody. <laughs> he's going to probably throw somebody shot up in the second row. Maybe. Um. That, because that's what he that's what he is. Yep. Um, Skip, I don't I don't look at him, I don't see Luca and, and and LeBron, a guy that, you know, assists the basketball, go get his own shot. Can he rebound like those guys? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. But I don't see him as a guy that's gonna get everybody that's what he got holiday for. Mm-hmm. Brandon Ingram mm-hmm. can handle the ball. They got Lonzo Ball. So they got enough ball handlers. So I don't see that kind of impact. But I do see splash plays. I do see highlight plays. And so you'll see him on a loop. Making all those plays. Skip, the thing that's concerned me about him, and it's always concerned me, is his health. Yep. And Skip, I got two guys, and you go, and no one's probably really thought about this. Two guys that had his athleticism that were 100 to 120 pounds lighter and have knee issues. Derrick Rose and Russell Westbrook. Those guys rival his athleticism, but at 120 pounds lighter. True. So can you imagine? A man that's 300 pounds with that kind of explosive athleticism. Up, down, up, down, up, down on a nightly basis. 20 minutes tonight, but you obviously you, you hope to eventually you get him to 30, 35 minutes mm-hmm. doing that over and over and over again. That's my concern, Skip. Hopefully he can, you know, get with the right training, get a, get a, a chef. And look, I know it's Skip, it's, it's you know, it ain't, it's not fun eating that, that bland stuff, you know. And I have people like, well, how do you Although, eat Although, if you start, as you well know, 
you, you'll retrain your taste Absolutely. buds, and after a while, you'll say, why did I eat that junk, right? You won't like it anymore. The thing is, Skip, is that what I told people when I, when I played and I trained, I said, the difference between you and I, I eat for survival, you eat for enjoyment. Mm -hmm. And therefore, that's why you can never beat me. True. Yeah. Zion, that's how you're going to have to be. But you can eat right yeah. for enjoyment, too. There are okay. ways to, to cook it right. Uh, well, I, I'm yeah. sure if Zion won't MVPs, won't championships more than he won't beignets and so. etouffee and, you know, I don't know if he like, yeah, but that boudin and all that. Kind of, yeah, I know you don't know about that kind of stuff, but yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean. So you've had lots of reservations about his body. Yes. Even within the last six weeks on yes. the show. You have had reservations. Has he gained too much weight when, when he couldn't do much, if any, cardio because he had knee surgery? Right. The video I saw yesterday, he looked pretty good. Okay. okay. Because they say, according to David Griffin, their GM, and I have a lot of respect for him, they have retrained everything about Zion mechanically. They retrained him to walk, to run, to jump off one leg, and to land, to land differently than right. he was landing before. Because the two guys you point out, Derrick Rose, Russell Westbrook, much lighter men, extremely athletic, <laughs> and often put themselves in dangerous, precarious situations mm -hmm. as they landed awkwardly mm -hmm. because they go up so high right. and get hit by so many bigger men, right. and then they fall precariously, mm -hmm. dangerously. Mm -hmm. Th that's not going to happen to this guy. He just, it's the pounding of 300 pounds coming down and down on your joints, mm -hmm. especially your knees. Right. They could wear out quickly, mm -hmm. okay? Because Kareem lasted a long time because he was man. life. Yes. He, he was, for his size, he was thin. Mm -hmm. could, could I dare say skinny? Yes, he, he was. He wasn't a big weight room guy. Mm -mm. And so he was landing softly. Right. And he didn't jump. And he wasn't explosive. He wasn't, Kareem was throwing the sky hook. He was throwing the sky hook. <laughs> and he could rebound pretty much flat footed because yeah. he was 7'3. Seven, seven, yeah, 7'1, seven, seven, I think. 7'1, seven, whatever. 7'2, yeah. 7'2. Okay. Seven, two, seven, two, seven, two. okay. So here's the point. Are we seeing a new guy? But whatever he did, he did it right. His body looked good to me. Right. So now uh, I'm going to quote my friend Brian Windhorst on ESPN. I saw him talking about how, remember, he covered, Brian covered LeBron from day one, like yeah. middle school on up. Mm -hmm. And Brian made the point that LeBron's first preseason ahead of that opening game at Sacramento, right. it, I'm going to use Brian's word, it was crap that LeBron was terrible and their team was terrible right. in the preseason. So right. you couldn't see him coming. Right. But on opening night at Sacramento, LeBron played 43 minutes. I just checked this. 43 yeah. minutes. He was still, was he 18 or 19? 18. Was he still 18? I think he was 18, 18 yeah. Because he was going to be 19 okay. in December. All right, that's true. Okay, so on opening night, he's still 18. 43 minutes, 25 points, 6 rebounds, 9 assists. Four steals. Uh, that'll work. Mm -hmm. And he shot 12 of 20 from the field, 0 of 2 from 3, no surprise, 1 of 3 from the free throw line, so that wasn't a big night. They lost 106 to 92, but they weren't very good. Right. But but I thought that was a sensational right. debut for right. LeBron James at that age. Oh, Zion got way more okay. help around him than okay. LeBron okay. had. Way more. So here was Brian's point, again back to Brian Windhorst. He said that Zion's four preseason games before he hurt his knee were, to use his word, awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He played... 27 minutes a night, not high minutes. Right. Average 23, seven rebounds, and two steals. Well, that you, and splash, lots of splash plays, right? Took, remember, he, everybody remembers when he took the ball from Kevin Knox. Oh, that was, in, was that in the summer league? Yeah, it was summer league. Yeah. And boom. Boom. Just <laughs> hammered it right. Yeah, I think, I think he called, he, he dunked on somebody from Atlanta. He yeah. hammer caught that. Skip, he, he's a highlight. He and Lonzo can be Gary Payton. And Sean Kemp. Yeah. Sean, he, he nicknamed Sean Kemp the Rain Man because it looked like he was just falling out of the sky. Yep. He was up so high. And this kid has that kind of athleticism. Yep. And remember, Sean Kemp started having problems, Skip, when what? He couldn't control his weight. Mm. You know, getting up there that high when you're a small man is one thing in landing. Mm. You get up there and you start getting 280, 290, 300 pounds mm. with that kind of explosion, that's asking an awful lot on, right. on those joints. Yeah. In the four precinct games, Zion shot 71% from the field. <laughs> Why? Because he can really finish. Yes. Either hand, yeah. kind of like LeBron. Right. I'm not saying he's going to be LeBron because he's not. It's just it's right. hard for anybody to ever right. be what LeBron is. And you see, Skip, like you said, the athleticism of a man that size, the way he can shift his body, contort yep. his body like a...
It's smaller man, like you see D-Rose, like you see Russ gets up in the air and doing all this and laying it up. That's how D-Rose, D-Rose was, D-Rose was Russell Westbrook before Russell. He had that kind of explosion. But the injuries in that tore it. Okay. So, he is joining a, a wildly <laughs> they are, exciting basketball they are, team. They are. Because they are young and they are hungry mm-hmm. and they are talented. Yep. And Lonzo is the perfect fit for Zion, to your point. And B.I. is playing at an all-star level, right? He is. He is. And Josh Hart is there, and Drew Holiday just came back. And th- those two kids they drafted are Jackson really Hayes talented. Jackson Hayes challenge at the rim. Yeah, he, he's a leaper also. Woo. And th- th- they got favors as, yeah. as kind of a, a tough he's older, solid, yeah, solid. veteran presence yep. in the paint. It's a pretty good basketball team that is just about to become must-see TV. I believe in, in, in Alvin Gentry, who's the head coach, Kip, I believe he's saying, guys, we can make the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Three and a half games out of we can eight. make the We can yep. make the playoffs. We're good enough to make the playoffs. They be sure live, because you know who they're going to get first round. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. The Clippers? Don't do that, Skip. Oh. <laughs> don't, don't, don't do that. Don't can do that. Can you imagine, though, a matchup between LeBron and Zion? I mean, you know what? It would be pretty good to start off with. It'd awesome. be pretty good. It'd be 4-0. That would huh? be huge. 4 0. Hey, Lon- well, Lonzo returns, B.I. returns, Josh Hart returns to L.A. That yeah. would work. Yeah, a couple of yeah. Okay. Hopefully they still got their place. Uh. They can sleep in it. Yeah. Because we're going to put... <laughs> you put them right to sleep? <laughs> okay. Oh, you know what, Skip? Well, you're going way out on a limb. Now, you, saw what they, now you know what AD do. What does AD do against his former team? Mm. Now, you know what he do, Skip. Because <laughs> you, you've been getting him hard time. Well, AD in the playoffs, he couldn't get a team. He's like, I'm going to show you. Mm. Yeah, I do like that. Oh, we're going to dump it down to him. I do love this. Yeah. 50. He I want to see that. I want to see 1-8 in that first round. If I, it'll be full. It's about as good as it gets. Yeah. yeah. Well, huh. You can just keep going that way. Huh. I kind of love that, yeah. actually. Yeah. No, you won't. Yeah. I mean, I love NBA WCC. I'll tell you what. I don't love my Spurs chances tonight at New Orleans because I think Why not? for a beating. Whoa, whoa, but yeah. Spurs. I mean, you know, they, they, they do everything. Coach Pop got them playing, too. Remember they beat the Celtics and they yeah. went on the road and beat somebody else? Yeah, somebody oh, else. Oh, the Bucks. Somebody the Bucks. Else. They beat the Bucks. You talk about, oh, they beat the Bucks. They beat Giannis. <laughs> now, all of a sudden, you worried about the Pelicans. Are you more Clippers or Spurs, or is mm. it even fair to say? Just different. He Kawhi. He a Kawhi fan. I've always been a Kawhi fan. And True. I'm back. Oh, you back? Yep, I'm back. Mm. Glad I thought I thought love was like an eclair. Yeah. Once it goes cold, it can't be reheated. But clearly, <laughs> really? that's not the case anymore. You can win people back. Mine got reheated. <laughs> I, I see. I see. Yep. You should take note, Shannon. You're Maybe right. You're right. Learn something there. It is. This is. <laughs> no mercy. The last time 49ers head coach Kyle Shanahan was in a Super Bowl, he was the offensive coordinator for the Falcons, who famously blew a 28-3 lead against the Patriots. The Falcons failed to drain enough time off the clock, and it allowed Tom Brady and company to come back and win in overtime. Shanahan said he's learned from that experience that this time things will be different if he has a fourth quarter lead in the big game. Former All-Pro cornerback Antonio Cromartie joining us again this morning. Mm, How you doing? You you, you know, I try. I do like this. Yeah, this is nice. I try. I'm trying trying to dress better than Shannon. Mm. How you going to try to dress me on my Try. You got to dress me on my show. I got to do it. ties all next week. (laughs) Yeah, it's going to be like, it's going to, yeah. Is that right? No ties all week in Miami. Uh, Who wears ties in Miami? Trying to compete with somebody, huh? <laughs> no, I wear, I wear ties. I'm just kidding. Now I can't wait to Straight see. Straight linen. Okay, Straight back linen. to this discussion, <laughs> although everyone looks great today, if I do say so. Antonio, I want to ask you, how much was Shanahan to blame for that 28-3 to collapse? I'll say 60-40. And the only reason I said that is because when you look at the whole picture, yeah, he kept passing the ball. He could have ran the ball more. I think it was averaging 4.6 yards to carry okay. during the game. But at the end of the day, the defense still didn't get off the field when they had an opportunity. So why won't sit here and just blame one man on what he could have done differently? Then you look at the defense side of the ball, they didn't stop anybody during that whole entire thing. They just kept giving up points. They got penalties. They had dumb plays and stupid plays on the, on the defense side of the ball and on the offense side of the ball. So I can't sit here and put all the blame on him because at the end of the day, it's a team sport. Mm-hmm. And this is, this is something that you, you, de- you got to depend on other people mm-hmm. in this sport. And if the defense is not holding up and then the offense is going down and not controlling the clock and not doing the thing mm. they're supposed to do, it makes things harder for you. But you're still going 60% of the I'm blame. I'm still going 60-40, yes. Okay. Yeah, yes. he has to take the lion's share of the blame. Um, I don't know where he's going to get percentage, but I would give him more than that. I'd say 85%. Mm-hmm. I would give the defense only 5% because when you start getting that 90 play drive, that 90 plays, mm-hmm. 
defense can't hold up for that many plays because that tells me the offense is going at tempo. And, and uh, D lineman, a couple of D linemen had gotten hurt, Skip. So the rotation that they had in the first half, they no longer had. Um, and Skip, there's some bad execution. Matt Ryan is an MVP. You can't take a sack in that situation. Yeah. So not only did he take a sack, they got a holding call that pushed him either further back. But see where I fought uh, Kyle, Skip, if you just run the ball three times, time's going to bleed off the clock, the guy kicks the field goal, you're up 11, ball game. See, in the fourth quarter, you cannot run the ball up, 20, up by 25 the same amount of time as the team that's down by 25. Mm -hmm. What sense does that make? Skip, there's an old saying that says a wise man learns from others' mistakes. A fool learns from his own. Mm. You would have thought after you saw what happened with Buffalo and the Bills in Houston. Because what couldn't they do, Skip? They didn't run the football. They just run and shoot, throw, throw, throw. And Buffalo had the greatest postseason comeback in history. Well, I guarantee you. Because guess what happened, Skip? Said, Let me tell you how good Kyle Shanahan learned his blessing. Jimmy Drew threw an interception against Minnesota. Since then, the 49ers have called 72 runs, 14 passes. Mm. He called two passes in the second half. That's just because he doesn't trust his quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> so that, hey, he got a lead. Make him stop it. Skip, if the Falcons run the ball three times and punt it, there's not enough time for the uh, <clears throat> Patriots to mm -hmm. come back. So Kyle learned a valuable lesson. I understand your offense, Skip, is to throw the ball because they've had great success. But also you get, your job is to understand the situation and where you are. Mm. Boom. So he, he learned a very, boy, that's a terrible lesson to learn, Skip. You don't want to learn a lesson like that right there. Mm -hmm. no. But he learned. No. He, like he said, he getting that situation again. Now, I don't know if he'll get up 28 to 3, but I can assure you if he gets a sizable lead, mm -hmm. he will run time off the clock as he should. Mm. I cannot tell you how I disagree, especially with you and somewhat with you. I disagree 60% with you and about 95%. <laughs> you know what he want to do. He want to get a credit to somebody else, but go ahead. Go ahead. I admired the way Kyle Shanahan called this game because there's another old expression, and it's from the state of Texas, and it's you dance with who brung you. And I think it was a Wade Phillips expression, yeah. mm. meaning if you got there doing something, you do it all the way home. Yeah. Whoever took you to the dance, you dance with her all the way home. Yes. You don't go start dancing so with other true. partners. No, no but, skip, but here's the thing. Okay, I'm going to dance with who got me there, but <laughs> the song's going to dictate what type of dance we do. You know what I'm saying? If the bus okay. got come on, if the butterfly to let you slide, well, I'm going to do that. Did, what had happened the night before at the NFL Honors? What had happened? Help me. You were there? Yeah, Matt got an like MVP. This, getting your cameo shot in the third row. Oh, and that, me and Dak yeah. was smile. hanging out. Me and Dak really? <laughs> See, I'm Shannon Sharp. I'm here. Look at me. Dak and I was hanging out. Trying to upstage the whole ceremony. <laughs> Who won the MVP? Shannon, Who got on. the MVP award that night? <laughs> Oh, yes. it was Matt Ryan, right. right? He was the MVP of the league. He's on fire. Their offense was on fire. Right. So what happened the last full time that they had the ball at the end of regulation? They start at their 10-yard line, first and 10 at their 10. And he throws 39. It was a, it was a screen pass to, to uh, Devontae Freeman. Mm -hmm. He goes for 39 yards. And then a couple of plays later, he hits Julio, unstoppable Julio. Uh, unbelievable tw kick. 27 unbelievable. yards. 27 yards. Boom. And all of a sudden, they're set up shop here. And yeah. they're first and 10 all the way down at the New England 22-yard right. line with 441 left in the game. And they are up eight points, yes. right? What do they do? Kyle said, I'm going to run some clock, and I'm going to run it to little Devontae. Okay. He had Tevin Coleman Devontae, so we didn't exactly. But Tevin Coleman had gotten hurt. He had gotten hurt. hurt. But what I'm saying, he didn't have, you know, big Derek, big number 22. He didn't have one of those, Derek Henry, right? right? Okay, but he ran him, and he went left side minus one. So what are you going to do on second down? I'm probably going to throw it because I'm going to dance with who brung me. Mm -mm. I'm going to go for the mm -mm. throw. Do you see, see? I'm going to play to win instead of playing not to lose because I'm looking over on the other sideline at a number 12 who is on fire. Right. I'm going to beat him at his own game. I'm going to throw it right down his throat because if I do, it's going to be game over right here, right now. And Matt Ryan, to your point, the MVP drops back, if we could see this, and he takes a sack you cannot take at this sack. point in the game. You got a sure field goal already set up, and Trey Flowers throws him down, and now you're in some trouble. But you're you're looking at now a 53-yard field goal, and he comes right back, 
and he hits Sanu, but they hold. Jake Matthews Matthew. held, and he hits Sanu for nine yards, and then he has to throw it to Taylor Gabriel, and that goes incomplete. But the point is, the pass to Sanu, and I got no use for Sanu of what he did in New England this year, but <laughs> he hits Sanu for nine yards to make it a 44-yard field goal, yeah. but they held. So is that Kyle's fault? Because you, you still got it get back to a 44-yard field goal, and if you make that, what's going to happen? That's but game it, over. But, 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 that, but that, that's our point. But, but, if you run the ball, even after you lost on second and 11, you run the ball again, time runs off. If you don't get a yard, so be it. Run the ball again. Now you kick it. Skip, the objective, I understand that. The, the whole objective is to get points. Yes. That's the whole objective. Okay. So if I kick this field goal from, from the 30, that's what, a 47-yard field goal? Right. Mm-hmm. So now, now you're looking at a 47-yard field goal, you go up by you go up by 11 with probably two minutes left in the game. Okay. So he goes for the throat. It takes a, a sack and a hold for him to be thrown. Right. From, that's not Kyle's but, fault. But, Skip, you got to factor. Skip, those are things that you factor in as a head coach is, is that not only do you get the call, Skip, you stop the clock. The hold and stop the clock. Okay. Yet and still, you punt the ball successfully. You punt it all the way back to the Patriots' nine-yard line. They're first and 10 at the nine right. with 338 left yes, in the game. Yes, yes. That's an eternity. Guess who? Guess what? Whose fault was that, that they went 91 yards, the Patriots did for a touchdown? Who's, whose fault was that? Yes, defense. Okay, they, they it's Dan Quinn. I think he's the quasi-coordinator, right. Yes. right? So I blame him. I blame that whole unit because you should be able to, if you got an eight-point lead and 91 yards of field to hold somebody, Crow's defense, they're going to say Crow, no. Crow, but you know, you can be playing all, you can play good the first half, but if that team put together a couple of drives and they get touchdowns, if something, if something happens in their mind and something happens in the defense mind, because all of a sudden we can't get off the field and the offense says, we know y'all can't get us off the field. Definitely. And that's what happened. That's how they got those 19 points. Skip, you just run the football in that situation. I understand. You run the football. See, and you look at his offense now. They don't have a Derrick Henry. Mostert is 180. Breda is 175, 180. Tevin Coleman, maybe 200. Okay. So they don't have a bruising, uh, a run game. But Kyle understands. He should have known from his dad because we made that mistake against Jacksonville. Mm. We come out there. Now, we've been running TD all year long. Now we're going to get out there and now we're going to throw the ball all over the yard. Huh. <laughs> I don't blame Kyle as much as I credit Tom Brady because you won't give him any credit. Yeah, I get you. Uh, All he did was throw for 246 yards in the fourth quarter well, and yeah, well, overtime. Come on, Skip. See, you he won't had, even let it go in your brain. He the luckiest catch of all time. The luckiest catch. With, with, with Julian Julie Edelman. Edelman. Come on now. So, we're going to so, come on. So, there are a bunch of not lucky Let me ask you a question. We're going to get Coach Belichick any credit because yeah. his defense pitched the huh. shutout. Wait, who threw for the two-point conversion to Amendola to tie the game and send it to overtime? Was that not clutch? Hold on. I'll, who threw that pick six to Alfred? Mm, well, that was way early. In the <laughs> game. Well, who? But, he, but you know who. 246 in the fourth quarter in overtime, and you guys are shrugging like, no, oh, skip. no big deal. Yep. Stop it. Skip. You Both have, of skip. you. Stop oh, it. You have to skip. be in that situation. Give him credit. But you got a lot of factors. Got The other team got to help you out, Skip. You know that. They helped them out a lot, Skip, on uh-huh. that last drive. Kyle Shanahan is saying we have to out Brady Brady. No, you don't. He no, tried you don't. No, his MVP no, you don't. took a what, sack. No, what what did Brady will say? Brady will say they pride themselves on beating you because you make dumb plays and dumb mistakes. Don't do that. It's tough enough to beat them, but don't you help beat them. Brady help was beat trying yourself. to win in spite of Ryan Tannehill. Da, da, you know it. No, 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 no. He did it. He did it. Your yep. guy. That's the same guy that threw for 246 in fourth quarter overtime, right? Yep. And what did he throw for the end? Well, unfortunately, he, he couldn't throw it to himself this year. He would have been okay. <laughs> oh, he did that without Gronk. Come on. Yeah. How you going to win a Super Bowl without Gronk? No Gronk. How about Sanu this year? Did you like him? <laughs> yeah, you told me he was a bust, right? <laughs> Skip, I told you from day one, I thought they should have traded for Emmanuel Sanders. Yeah. Yeah. And then, oh, no, so he was a Rutgers guy. What do they got to do with it? where he's from? Man, yeah, Sanu can't run anymore. I, he, Emmanuel's in the Super Bowl. Yeah. I don't know how he did that, but he is. Way to go. No mercy going to be a clash of two different styles in the Super Bowl. The Chiefs led the league this season in yardage on passes down the field of 20 plus yards thanks to speedy receivers and Patrick Mahomes strong arm. On the other side of the ball the 49ers defense allowed the fewest yards this year on deep passing plays and have been the best at containing big plays down the field. So Antonio when you consider the two who has the edge in that aspect? Well I'm giving the edge to Kansas City. I think when you look at it overall, um, I mean, they had 72 passes over 20 yards this year. 
They had 92 in 2018, so they torn it down. But you got to think, Patrick Mahomes didn't play a couple games. Right. Mm-hmm. So though, that, that, that Plus, number the, went the down. The yards went up. The actually. yards, yeah, yeah, definitely. And the yards went up. But, I mean, you look at it, they completed, what, 50, 53% of the passes going downfield? Mm-hmm. That was 20-plus yards. So, to me, when you got the speed on the outside and you can go out and do the things you want to do, you give, you give Patrick Mahomes enough time, he's going to find an open man. Because somebody's going to be open because nobody can run with those guys. Yep. So I'm giving the edge to those guys just for the simple fact that's what they've done. That's what they've done in the, the last two years, and that's what they're capable of because of the speed they have on the outside. Mm. And they can put people in different places mm-hmm. to create the mismatch. And that's what football is all about, creating mismatches. And if you can't, if you can't cover Tyreek Hill when he's in the slot, when he can go from one hash to the other <laughs> side of the numbers, it's over. Mm. Big time. How yeah. would you like to wind up with Tyreek in the slot? I, I, like I told Shannon during the break, I'm glad I'm not playing right now. <laughs> <laughs> I like the honesty. <laughs> yeah, we, we haven't seen a guy that can accelerate like this. He's a fo- he's a football player that has track speed. Normally track guys skip their fan, their rail, John Ross type, Ronaldo, Neil Myers, hmm. and they're not football players. This guy's a football player with track speed. Mm-hmm. Skip, I'm going to give the edge to, to, to Kansas City. But the simple fact is that Mahomes and his arm, and as, as Crow said, those receivers, we've never seen speed like this. Maybe you got to go back to the old Raiders when they had uh, uh, Sam Grady and they had Mervin Fernandez, Willie Galt, guys that were Olympians yeah. skip on the track. I agree. They had speed yeah. like this here. But they didn't have a quarterback like this. If you look at two of the three losses that uh, the 49ers suffered, Lamar Jackson and Russell, and Russell Wilson, what can those two guys do? Extend plays. That's the last thing you want to do with a guy like this is let him extend plays. Now, they got a four-man front. They don't really uh, – Robert Sala, the D coordinator for the 49ers, mm-hmm. they don't have to blitz much. Mm-hmm. They can normally generate pressure with four, drop those seven back in coverage, mm-hmm. and when they play that coverage, they don't let anything over the head. Okay. But if you let this kid buy time like Russell Wilson did, because 49ers like to beat him twice. I'm not 49ers. Seahawks like to beat him twice. Lamar Jackson can extend plays. This guy can extend plays and can throw the ball over your head. So I'm going to give a slight nod to the Chiefs. But it's all going to be predicated on how successful mm-hmm. can that offensive line be. Kansas City don't get the credit that some of these offense they don't get the credit of the Cowboys. They don't get the credit of the Colts. Mm-hmm. This is a damn good offensive line, especially at pass protecting. They do a great job of keeping him upright. And when they don't, they let mm-hmm. he, he can find a lane. And now what he's shown, what, guess what he's put on tape the last two weeks? If I run, run I, I, I'll give I, me. I'm going to put quotes on that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, okay, you put on tape. I'll walk really fast. Really fast. <laughs> hey, that's that's, that's so that, seven yards. That's on tape. Really the, the last two games, when you take off these games, when you look at the body of work, they're like, hold on, we got to be careful. Because remember, Skip, he had another one, I think, against uh, uh, Titans there where he ran for a touchdown. Yep. So now that's on tape. We got to be cautious of his ability to Definitely. run the football, mm. not just throw the ball over our head down the field. So to your point about Tyreek, I once had to sit and watch a game called Bedlam between oh. Oklahoma and Oklahoma State <laughs> at Oklahoma. And Bob Stoops, my former head coach, <laughs> had the audacity to punt the ball at the end of the game to Tyreek Hill, who was back for a punt. It's like the only way they're going to win the game is you're going to punt it to him and let him catch it. Uh-oh. And he caught it, and he ran, and he ran, and he ran, and he went, Track speed yeah. <laughs> all the way home and they lost. <laughs> Ball game, bedlam. Yep. That one hurt. It hurt. And that's the first time I said, that guy yeah. is something. Mm-hmm. I've never seen that. On TV, you can just, it's, it's like a blur. It, it flies off your TV in your living room mm-hmm. where you say, that's fast. Yes. Mm-hmm. So to your point, Mr. Cromarty, you said, if you give Patrick Mahomes enough time, that's what you prefaced your, yes. your answer with that. It boils down to this. This, to me, is going to be the 07 season Super Bowl all over again. The first Eli Tom Brady Super Bowl in which Eli and company pulled off the huge upset at the time and stopped Mm -hmm. 19 and 0. And why did the Giants pull that off? Because they had a front four, but they actually had three pass rushers who allowed same coordinator, right? Mm-hmm. Spagnola. Spagnola allowed him not to blitz. I don't know how – they might not have blitzed at all the whole game. <laughs> right. They just rushed three and four. The, the fourth guy didn't matter, but it's obviously Michael Strahan, Justin Tuck, O.C.U. Manure. Right. You remember yes. him? Right, yes. And they were getting home consistently. They were bothering Tom Brady on nearly every throw. Mm-hmm. And Justin Tuck got him twice, and Michael Strahan hit him twice, and O.C. hit him once, and they all had – pretty high tackles. Right. So they were disrupting the whole day. 
That's how they held Tom Brady to 14 points. But what couldn't Tom do that Mahomes can do? Mahomes move. can move. Okay. They knew Tom Brady was going to be a statue. We don't have to worry about anything. We coming. Mm-hmm. So even if we run past him, we're fast enough to track him, to turn around and chase him down. But not okay. only that, when you look at it, Tom Brady don't have the receivers that Patrick Mahomes does too. Well, he had Randy Moss. Right. That's he all. had one way. He had Ritten, one. Yeah. One. And he had Wes he, Welker for what it was listen, worth. He, I, he I ain't know. got every single guy on that, on that squad that runs 4-3 or better. <laughs> <All right. laughs> and then he definitely didn't have a tight end like Kelsey. No. no. <laughs> I, I, I give you that. But what did he do? What does he do that Patrick doesn't do? He gets rid of it quicker right. than anybody yes. when he has people who right. can separate right. just a little bit. Because the thing is that Wes Welker was the guy that we can get the ball to him right now. Kansas City's looking to push the ball. They ain't throwing nothing short, Skip. They trying to get everything is 10 yards and more. They trying to get the home run. They trying, they trying to gut you. Okay. They're not trying to nickel and dime you. Okay, so why did, and we're boiling this whole game down to this, one team led the league in big plays, the other team led the league in stopping big plays, yeah, I mean, not I, allowing. I mean, well, I mean, what okay. it, San Fran gave up, what, 10 completions on 51 attempts? That's the only thing. And, uh, uh, with, you're with, talking about 10 yes, plus yes, yards. Yes, yes, uh, 20 plus yards. Then you, look at, Sherm, then you look at Sherm. Sherm was what? Uh, Sherm then had nine tries. On, on, on 20 plus yards. Okay. And didn't have, didn't give up any. Right. They gave him two. They gave him two completions because of penalties. He Which had is two why penalties. Richard Sherman was rated by Pro Football Focus the, highest, the number the one, one corner, corner in right. football. Yes. Right. So you got that. It looks like they kind of shored up the the upside corner. He that that kid's playing pretty well. They're sound. They're solid. But if they can get home, if they can bother and him in, Pat, right. because what was kill, what I tell you about Tennessee, they went in there and said, let's rush three mm-hmm. and let's get them all trapped in the middle right. where he's got wide open lanes. Any, he and can if, choose either way. And if you exactly. rush three, you definitely can't run up the field. You got to no. stay even with the guy. You got to stay yeah. level. Okay. And if you get level with him and you see him step up, now you got to come, come flat. They were running, Skip, on the, the touchdown run, the dude runs slam up the field. He takes himself out. What do you think Mahomes like? Oh, <laughs> whoa, there's nothing over there. There's Harold Landry. He, yeah. ran, he runs 10 <laughs> yards past him. Where are you going? But, you going to run to the locker room? But, but, I don't know but what you're But this is what I want y'all to think about, too. Uh, with, even with Kansas City, their defense. Yeah, I think. Since Terrell Suggs has joined that defense, they allow only 17 points a game. They're better. They're they played better. better. I agree. But now you add, now you add what's his name, uh, Chris Jones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You add him to the mix. That he came back. You saw what he brought to the game. Yes. So now you you talking about Terrell Suggs, Chris Jones, and those guys up Frank front. Clark. Frank this, Clark. This and is those why guys. you trade for Frank Clark. That's and that's Honey Badger. Badger. Honey Badger's been know. unbelievable. Yeah. He led hey, him in tackles. Listen, he's a smart player. <laughs> they letting Honey Badger do what he do. Yeah. He let him roam the field. Yep. Yep. And let him do what. Let him be the playmaker. You were talking about instincts, nose for the football. I, I've not seen a better nose. One of the be, one of the best plays I saw, Skip, is that last well against the ty- the Texans. Yep. He carries one. And he knows they're trying to run him off with the, yeah, with the clear he, route. And, and, he comes he, off. <laughs> and he peels back and takes the dagger. Yes. I'm like, hey, dude. Hey, that's film study. That is film study. Yes. Hey, hey, it's special. But so is this front five. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Just, just to remind everybody, Nick Bosa was the second overall pick. We know that. Right. Mm-hmm. But Eric Armstead was the 17th pick in the first right. round. Yeah. DeForest Buckner was the seventh overall pick. D. Ford out of Auburn was the 23rd pick. And Solomon Thomas was the That's third right. overall pick. And Solomon and Thomas can't get on the field. He can't get on the field. The field. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. But he's the fifth, <laughs> he, he's the fifth wheel. Yes. And he was the third overall yes. pick. Yes. That's You're crazy. kidding. That's okay. Crazy. Well, you don't think you can get home some with those guys? And you see how they built their team, Skip? Front to back. Offensive line, solid. Defensive line, solid. That's the way we're going to play. We're going to build it out. Offensive line, defensive line, let's go play football. Because yeah. you got if you're going to run the football in this league, you better have an offensive line. Yep. If, when you think of West Coast, everybody always think of West Coast as a uh, finesse. Mm-hmm. They're a physical team. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're very physical. When you run the football like they run it, you don't run the football for 280. Mm-hmm. You don't. Be, I think they were second in the league in rushing, Skip, yeah. without being physical up front. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And when you can rush four guys, you feel you, you whip people. Mm. Definitely. And that's and, what they do. And they have a Richard Sherman who's way better than Darrell Revis ever Uh-oh. thought about these. <laughs> <Uh-oh. laughs> Am I right? There you go. Right? Yeah. There you go. Right? Uh, 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 the pot what, you gonna stir the pot like that? What are you doing? Wow, Skip. You, you were educated. educated. I thought we left that until you yesterday. You educated me that. <laughs> <laughs> no. I got to ask, did you hear any more yesterday? Yeah. No, I ain't hear any more. Okay. okay. So won't. we did leave it. We left it. Yeah. Yeah. I won't hear any more, trust me. Unless Skip brings that it up. Fence. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Antonio, it's such a pleasure to have you. Thank you for being here. We appreciate it. No mercy. 
Well, a bench-clearing brawl broke out last night in the Kansas versus Kansas State game after a K-State player stole the ball with under 10 seconds left and then got his layup blocked on the other end. Silvio De Sosa got a technical for standing over and staring down the K-State player, and from there the bench is cleared. At one point, De Sosa held a stool over his head before it was taken from him by an assistant coach. And Kansas coach Bill Self called the incident an embarrassment and said, that there would be consequences. So, Shannon, who was most at fault for this? K-State. Let's give the clock's running down. You're down by 22. Mm. And the Kansas player is trying in good faith, not running an offense, not trying to get any more points, Skip. He's going in the corner. He's going to let the time run out. And this sneaky rascal right here, all of a sudden he want to be hero. Somehow he thinks there's a chance to hit for him to get a 23-point play. DeWan Gordon. Yes. Yep. So he deserved it. He, he spiked it like Phil Dahlhauser did on, on beach volleyball, Jenny, back in the mm. Olympics. Anyway, he spiked yeah. it on top of his head and then stepped over him like Iverson did Ty Lu in the NBA Finals game once. Skip, you remember that. Mm-hmm. And stood over him, yes! You're supposed to get that done. Bro, you know you don't do that. Skip, there's a very similar play. I don't know what it is with Kansas. They're playing Monmouth. They're up 110 to 55. Wh- which, when are you talking This about? year, okay, in, no- right. in November. In yeah. November. Yeah. Skip, the guy, they're up, Kansas is up 110 mm-hmm. to 55 on Monmouth. Dri- look, look at this play, Skip. And he's just dribbling like, okay, I'm going to dribble out the clock. Yep. Why is this rascal here? It, he dunks it, runs up the court and says, I don't give a bleed. I don't give a... Really, Skip? Well, that's just unnecessary. Now, see, somebody swung and said they should have called him right up out the air, run him right up, run him up out the air. That's, that's Bush League, Skip. And you know that. And, the, K-State, uh, K- and uh, the guy from K-State that came off the bench, he's in street clothes. It's swinging. K-State player was wrong for this. You don't do that. Because now, you know, Bill Self is like, okay, hey guys, hey, probably put his thumb down. Hey, we just gonna let the time run off, Skip. We're gonna get up, you know, go home. We got a nice little win over our, you know, in-state rival. And this guy gonna sneak around and get the ball and try to get a cheap point. Come on, man, you don't do that. Mm. So it was his fault. Now, all the chairs, you know, I thought it was WWE, anything goes match. Skip, I remember those matches, anything goes chairs. Mm-hmm. You know, you bring a rope in there, all I love them kind of matches. But <laughs> you can't have this. You can't have this in sport, and you definitely can't have it, have it in collegiate athletics. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, it's a bad look. It's a horrible look. Some guys going to get go sit, gonna go have to sit down, Skip, for a little while. Uh, uh, and so they'll think about this. But K-State, they're wrong in this situation. Mm. I will give you... He broke the unwritten rule. Just let the clock run out. Right. I'm going to give you that. But this is Kansas in Fog Allen Fieldhouse. This is deep tradition. This is Bill Self's program. Mm-hmm. And I know Bill pretty well. And I have a lot of respect for him. And I think he was ashamed of what ensued after yeah, that. Absolutely. Because breaking the code, breaking the unwritten rule, still does not necessitate what was about to happen because Silvio de Sosa, for those who have forgotten, was a central figure in the most recent big college recruiting scandal. Mm -hmm. It was alleged that he took money to go to Maryland, and then it was alleged that he took more More money money to go to to Kansas. To undo (laughs) undo the Maryland deal to go to Kansas, although his guardian went on and on about Bill Self does not pay anybody and Bill's defended himself and I'm, they're probably still in some hot no, water. But, no, no, the coaches don't come out of their back pocket, but right. the moves to do. Okay, <laughs> so the point is that's the young man yes. who then lost his cool and went down and spiked it. Oh, to point. Okay. He spiked it and then he stepped over him and he stood over him yeah. and he taunted him. And the problem I have with that is It's not KU. That's not what KU does. They're better than that. They were winning by what felt like a million. (laughs) That's their in-state rival. That's Kansas State Purple. So you you did what you needed to do, and it's over. And he winds up, DeSosa, with a stool down in the the end of the in in that section Uh for disabled people, and he's he's got a he's got a stool up over his head, and one of the assistants grabs his arm. So that he can't about to, use he's about to throw it. He's, he's about to use it on somebody. <laughs> because that, it happened right there in K-State's bench. So that's why the guy was able to get there so quickly, Skip, okay. because it happened right there in front of K-State's mm-hmm. bench. So that's why the, you see the K-State players immediately, they bolt. And the guy that's in the street clothes, I don't know what his name was, and he came in, everybody looking like, okay, well, it's on for sure now. And if, 
if DeSosa's arms hadn't been grabbed, we could have had worse than a Miles Garrett on Mason Rudolph right. situation with the helmet, remember? Because if he uses the stool on somebody's head, oh, yeah, yeah. oh it, we're, we're going to have problems, you, right? Real, somebody's going to really get hurt. Right. And it was such an ugly incident. Have, have I seen worse? Bro- yes, I've seen yeah. worse. A few punches were thrown. I couldn't see if any really landed flush. I let's get what's get for the K-State player. What did he hope to accomplish no, by doing just, this? It's just a rivalry. It's just tr- trying to get even. You you've been embarrassed. Yeah, okay, you, you were embarrassed, yeah. right? Yeah, okay, you go. You called to, the L. Yeah. You get, okay, wait till you guys come to our place. Come to Manhattan, and we got something for you in store. You don't do no no bull job okay. like this. But if you play for KU. You just let it go. You just shrug it off and let the clock run out. I'm tired of being the bigger man. Go to the next one. I'm tired of being the bigger man. Okay, but who cares what Monmouth does or seriously what (laughs) K-State does? You you don't, you just don't care. You're not in the same league. Yeah, Yeah, you're you're not, you're you're in the same league, but you're really not in the same league. You're in a different level. Skip, it's like, look, when we get in the victory formation, don't be coming. Oh, that's low blow. No, don't be coming trying to tee off on the ball. You know we do it. Now you can hurt somebody. Right. Yeah. So... Because Skip, remember when uh, uh, Patrick Beverly Eli. he got Russ. Okay, because Russ was about to call a timeout. It, it was similar yes. to this, and he snuck it. You know, tried to, and he clipped Russell's knee. Okay, but the game wasn't over. No, no, it, was it wasn't still hot and heavy. Right, you know, it's still a competitive. It was just game. like Russ was going to call a twenty-second timeout, yes. and he tried to put the ball, ball under his arm. Right, to, to, and, yeah. you know, and, and uh, Pat Bev came in and he clipped him on his knee. He did. And that was that was started Pat Bev and Russ. Oh, did it? That started it. But Skip, that was a bush league move. That was a bush league. Okay. But I think also Bush League was what DeSosa did. It, by KU standards, that was Bush League. Now, sometimes some, Beneath their dignity. Sometimes you, you got to put that act right on them. You, yeah. Sometimes, Kim, you got to put that straightening on them, Jim. Uh. He may so- get suspended for Hey, Hey, there were, there's some speculation that he might be gone for the rest of the what? year. I mean, there were. Yep. But that! Mm-hmm. That's what I'm. It was. Well, he should have went there anyway, the chair. Nah, but the chair no. was. But he hit him, did he? He has to also be able to. Hold back from that, though. No, he's I like, understand the He's like, I was protecting myself because I didn't know what was going to happen. Jenny, you know you're in a fight, right? So yeah. anything in, in a fight, in that situation, I understand we're in fall gallons. But it is a fight. And in a fight situation, anything can pop off. So what if he'd had Yeah, I don't know. He might have been going to get know. a chair. I don't know. I hope he ain't taking from yeah. someone that was sitting in that chair. You said yeah. that was a disabled section. Yeah. But they probably got out of the way. A, a lot of Kansas boosters are glad you don't coach their basketball team. No, 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 no. Hey, no, no, no. See, but see, mm. but see, that's why. I ran score up on them. Mm. See, I ain't gonna call, I ain't calling the dogs off. I'm trying to beat you 255. Well, it was it felt about that bad. I mean, come on, man. You don't do and the mama's guy, he steal it and dunks it. And talk about, I don't give a bleep. Well, it's like, I don't give a bleep. What are you trying to prove here. See? Something was going on there. They had, had some there was some incident in the game that yeah, had well, provoked yeah, that. Let me tell you what was going on. They were down 55. Okay. That's what was going on. Right. It's not a good look for college athletics, though, and for the I'd kids say. watching. I mean, that's that's Ooh. Wow. Maybe I'm like a mom here yeah, I mean, watching but, up but, for the but, little like, kids. Like a, but. Skip, we had, what what that kid, what K, KU was doing, Skip? That was victory formation. We just gonna dribble oh, out the I clock, it, and the I guy come it. gonna try to tee off. Yeah. Again, I've seen worse and damage done, but on just the overall look of it, it was ugly. What's yeah. good, what happened? It was on TV, next yeah. national televised game. Oh. So that that didn't help the that didn't yep. help the cause. And I've only seen it about forty seven <laughs> times now. <laughs> so yeah. these two teams will play again right. in yep. just a little over a month. So can you imagine in Manhattan if the Manhattan malice of the Manhattan. palace had happened on TNT or a national televised game? Skip, can you imagine? It felt like it was on national TV. No, I don't. Think I don't so. know. Mm. Uh, it did feel it like we all saw it regardless. No mercy. Here is the thing. We're going to transition, though, to baseball because to no one's surprise, Derek Jeter was elected into the Baseball Hall of Fame yesterday. Jeter received 396 out of a possible 397 votes on his first ballot. He was a five-time World Series champ, a World Series MVP, and a 14-time All-Star. Just saying all those numbers out loud. Mm -hmm. Shannon, what did Jeter mean to you? Skip, he's the captain, El Capitan. He's a, he was a great leader. And when you think of, look, Jerry Jeter was not the best Yankee. But for this generation, they think he was. And he skipped. It wasn't what he did in the regular season because he didn't have, you know, he didn't, like these shortstops now hitting 35, 40 home runs. Mm-hmm. He's not, he didn't have a 355 average. But Skip, regular season and postseason, it's hard to beat what he did. From an offensive standpoint, he was always clutch. The big hit, 
home run on the defensive side. The play that he made against the A's. He wasn't supposed to be there. Mm. But somehow he was always, he was always where he wasn't supposed to be to make the right play. Yep. He was he was special. And, mm. and in this age, Skip, no, there was no scandal surrounding him mm. on the field. There was no pine tar, there was no cork bat, there was no steroids, there was no anything. Mm. Now he had a great life off the field. How he was able to keep that on the wrap, Skip, I don't know. Especially with this social media age. But it, it, it got into page six. I mean, it got into page six a couple of times. But, yeah. But can we definitively say, can we, I mean, he, mm-hmm. can we definitively say that was him? Mm-hmm. But, Skip, but, but as Jenny read his accolades, the five-time World Series champ, the MVP, the Silver Sluggers, the Golden, Glo- uh, uh, Golden Globe, Glove Awards, mm-hmm. Skip, he was it. I mean, one organization for 20 years, and he was a model citizen. So for me, the name that he, that he was bestowed, the captain, Yep. It fits. Skip. Two words. Clutch class. Yep. That's what he was. Mm-hmm. I can't sum him up any better. The truth was, Derek Jeter was an overachiever. I don't think he was the most wildly talented guy. No. I used to know his trainer very well, like one of the guys who has trained him, and he used to laugh to me about how sort of unathletic his body looked. He was not ripped or cut. Mm -mm. He wasn't a big weight room guy. Right. He looked without a shirt on like some normal guy. Yeah. And yet, you want to talk about production under fire? Look at his postseason records. He he had 200 hits in the postseason. That's that's mind-blowing to me. Good luck with somebody breaking that one. Yeah, good luck on that. (laughs) He holds the all-time postseason records for runs scored, hits, total bases, doubles, and triples. Now, again, he played in 158 games, Mm -hmm. but he took advantage of all those games. And you brought up that play at the plate, and I covered that series because I was in the Bay Area. Right. And the Oakland A's went to Yankee Stadium, and they were a hot young team with a stud pitching staff. And they took the first two games at Yankee Stadium, and game three was in Oakland. And... The turning point of the whole series was Derek Jeter was there. He he got there, and he backhand flipped it and nailed not Jason Giambi, but his brother Jeremy at the plate. And Mm -hmm. why Jeremy didn't slide, I don't know, but he didn't think he needed to slide. Exactly. It just caught him completely off guard. He thought it was a stand-up score, and he got nailed at the plate, and that turned the whole series around. That's Derek Jeter in a nutshell was that play. Right. Skip, look. Did he have the flair at the shortstop position like Omar Vizquel or Ozzy Smith? No, 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 no. In fact, a lot of people have knocked him because he had he had low range. Right. He had he, had, he, he cost his range. I mean, he cost his team a lot of range runs. Right. Where he just couldn't get the balls. Right. But he did win five, five Gold Gloves. Mm-hmm. Well, that's because when he did get to the ball, he made the play. Right. And I thought it was almost like he invented the running jump Jump. throw from the hole, right? Mm -hmm. Could he pull that play off? Yeah. Okay, well, he saved some some runs that way, I think. But he, he, look, like I said, I mean, and the pressure. There's there's one thing doing what, you know, you play 20 years and you play for an organization that's not the Yankees. He played for the Yankees. That's the gold standard in, in baseball. That's it. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, Chicago, we know what the Cubs represent. We know what the Red Sox. But the Yankees, 20 seasons in that uniform with the hits, the big, as you mentioned, the big clutch hits. Not, yeah, you had over 3,600 hits, but it's the hits and when they came come playoff time. And his 3,000 hit, what, it was a home run? I mean, dude had all the I mean, come on, man. You ain't supposed to have all the luck, Jenny. You're not supposed to play 20 years for the Yankees, win five World Series, get all the hot shit. I mean, his, his outfit's littered. <laughs> He got everything. You sound jealous. I am He's jealous. He's happily married now, right? Yeah. He's good. You any, I, did anybody even know? You're like, the next thing you know, he married. Mm. Yeah, he's, I think he has a couple kids. Yeah. He's good. He had fun. He's fine. It's so New York I'm, City. I'm not sure which way this works. Either <laughs> Derek Jeter is the Tom Brady of baseball uh-huh. or Tom Brady is the Derek Jeter of football. Right. Huh. Probably the last. But here's the thing. I don't think we can deny that Tom Brady is the best player in the, in the you know, Patriots organization. He's not better than Ruth. He's not better than Gary. He's not better than Matt or DiMaggio. Jeter, right. Jeter, right. Oh, yeah. not, so yeah. that, that's the thing, though, Skip. I mean, what? He's maybe fifth, sixth best, sixth best player of all time? Would you like Whitey Ford? I mean, hard to think of. Skip, he's not talking. He, Yogi Bear. Yeah. But let's, babe, Lou, DiMaggio, mm-hmm. Mantle. He's not better than those. Nope. 
I don't think he's better than Yogi Berra. So, like, so, go look at Yogi Berra's numbers yeah. and tell me. So if, you, so if you want to start him at five, I mean, mm-hmm. you like Whitey Ford? Yes, okay. I do. So I'm sorry, yes. But, he, but what he was able to do, like you said, Skip, in the clutch and the manner in which he done it in the class in which he held himself, and like I said, there's no mention of impropriety on the field. And plus, he was the unquestioned leader of the Yankees for 20 years. That's a bull job that rather than somebody, he left him off his ballot or didn't vote no for him. I have no idea what For what? About. To say, yo, I didn't vote one, for Derek Jeter? One guy. I just need to know one thing. When are they going to put Barry and Roger in it? Thank you for bringing that up. I appreciate that because it looks like never. After yesterday, it looks like neighbor, uh, never because they're 0 for 8 now. Skip. And they're, they're decreasing in their rise, you know. Okay, let's just say for the sake of argument, Barry did it. We believe he started somewhere around 99, 2000. He was already a Hall of Famer before that. No doubt. Roger was already a Hall of Famer, even if you believe he did it, no even doubt. though it wasn't illegal to do it. He already had three Cy Youngs, and Barry already had eight gold gloves, I believe, yeah. by the time he got big. Just what he did and what he did in Pittsburgh alone Agreed. was enough to get him in. Yep. No, come on, dude. He had it all. He could steal bases. He could... He was, he was a true five-tool player. Yep. Because, Skip, even, even before the, he got big, it was the argument, who's better, Barry or Griffey Jr.? That was the argument. Mm. It was him, too. It wasn't anybody else was in the discussion. Mm. Griffey Jr. or Barry Jr.? Bonds Jr.? Barry Bonds was the greatest hitter I ever saw, and it wasn't close. And I covered him. I was there. Mm. There were nights when, again, he got big. I'll give you that. But you still have to do that. Right. You have to put bat on ball, right. and it's hard. Well, imagine if he, if, 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 he, if he got big and he was doing that stuff. Imagine if he knew the sign, if the sign, what pitch was coming. Mm. If he literally knew, but he really did because his hand-eye coordination. He got one pitch a night. He hit it hard somewhere. Normally, it was a McCovey Cole. That is correct. <laughs> it, either, it either hit the water or it hit the wall. He hit it hard. Mm-hmm. Look, when they walk you with the bases loaded, buck your wall to walk he that did. man with the bases loaded. loaded. See, I'd rather walk in and run. And have you hit a grand slam. That's a you know that was, You know that was going to happen. Yep. Mm. And yet I covered Barry, and he was always so derogatory to the media, and that's why he's not in. Yes. Because he was just difficult to deal with, and I had lots of problems with him, and I don't care. Yes. Mm. You're I right. don't care. Yeah. You're right. Greatest mm. thing I ever watched was him in that home run race. Wow. Ooh. All right. Well, I did check with some sources, and I can confirm Rob Parker was not the voter. Oh, did good. not pick him because he did vote for Jeter. So oh, okay. just so oh, we know, listen, Rob Parker it was not Rob Jerry. Parker. Yes. Oh. I know, but we want to make sure. Got to okay. make sure it wasn't our guy. <laughs> he doesn't vote in all this thing. Uh, either way, I miss watching him play, and congratulations. No mercy. Guys, Zion Williamson makes his NBA debut tonight. Finally, the wait is over while the number one overall pick has been out. The second overall pick, John Morant, has taken the league by storm. An anonymous Western Conference GM told Yahoo Sports that he would have drafted John over Zion with the number one pick. So, Shannon, what is your reaction to this? Well, you'd have to consider it, um, considering, Skip. And, and when you draft the player, Skip, you're thinking long term. Mm-hmm. And this is what I'm thinking about the possibility of Zion not having a long-term career because of injury. Um, I believe if you weigh things out, Michael Jordan should have went at bare, went worse second over Sam Bowie, given his injury history skip when he had at Kentucky. But I understand they had selected Clyde Drexler, 6'7", small forward, two guard. So do we really need two of those type, same type players? But I also understand the Pelicans. Mm-hmm. Well, we got your Holiday. We got Lonzo. So do we need another do we need another point guard? No. So, and that dude's a walking highlight, too. <laughs> Why you would, Skip? As far as he, he might dunk on somebody, because he almost took Kevin, Kevin Love's life. He almost, he, that, that was the rich Skip. He'd he put him in the grave with that. Mm, really? Yeah, he'd put him in the grave with that one. Mm. That, that, yeah, he'd put him in the grave. It, it did. It reminded me of Jalen Brown over no, it didn't. LeBron oh, it James. Oh, it reminded you of? <laughs> it did. No, it did. Should we watch him side by no. side and like, compare? I, I mean, and, and the assist. <laughs> oh, my goodness, Skip, come on. So don't, don't sleep on him. So, yes, you would have really had to consider this, Skip. But I, I get Zion. You're talking about something that we had never seen before. You're talking about a man that's 6'6", that has the explosive athleticism of a man much smaller. Uh, and so I understand. But, yeah, you would have really had. You, it would have made me pause, Skip. It would have made me pause. But given the Pelican situation, they already got guards galore 
on their roster, so I can see why they went with Zion. But yeah, you would have had to consider it, considering Zion's possibility of injury history. If memory serves, you told me before the draft lottery mm-hmm. that you would lean Ja over Zion. I did, yes. I remember that. But your premise was you just didn't think Zion could stay healthy. Correct. Right? Yes. Is Ja better, like my favorite, in a vacuum? No, he's not. Right. Ja is really good. Right. I love this kid. Right. I love what he's done. He's played even better than I thought he could and would Mm -hmm. as a rookie. Mm -hmm. He's got that team rolling. They are in the eighth playoff spot as we speak, a half game ahead of my Spurs. Mm -hmm. And they have won eight of their last ten games. The Pelicans the other night did go in there and just shut them down. Beat the brakes off them. The Pelicans made a (laughs) franchise record 21 threes because I think they were excited that they were about to get Zion back. So they're right on schedule, coming right together on time. But John ja Morant has been special, man. Yes. And I didn't think he could shoot 41% from three because I had some question right. about that. But the young man knows his limitations. Right. He's not a big, high-volume three-point shooter, so he tries mm. two a game. Right. He's making 41%. That is... That's plenty you, good. You know what? That's mature. Right. That's That's a mature basketball game right. that you have. We, we, we knew he could assist the ball. You don't yep. average 20 and 10 in college. No, you do We're not, not being a, a facilitator. And that's what we like. Okay, he's a true... He's an old-school point guard. He's Mike Conley. He's Chris Paul. He's not these new wave... Trey, yeah. Trey, uh, uh, Trey Young, he's not that type of point guard or hard or Westbrook where they look to score and then we'll get you involved. He's looking to involve people, but he can score. And I just believe he's going look, he's 18 and 7 right now. They're in the eight seed. Skip, I believe, I believe he can he can be a double digit assist guy while still averaging 18, 22 points a mm-hmm. night. I, I'm a little surprised the seven is not 10-ish. Right. Because he should be 10-ish. And yet he's He's good for one highlight a night, hmm. and Zion's going to be good for three a night, I'm pretty <laughs> sure. So to me, I, I, I read the quote from the anonymous GM, but he also said, I, I would have either taken Ja or I would have traded back. Right. Because if you, if you don't... You want one of those two guys or nothing. Oh, or, or nothing, but, but if you say he's not going to stay healthy and he's not that great, like he's not the number one overall pick, great, he's not going to change my life kind of great, then I'm going to trade back. Right. Well, okay, I get that, but I'm going to bank on Zion staying relatively healthy. But you could be right about this because the odds are more in your favor than in mine. That's it. He's just too big and and not tall enough. It's too bulky big. It's it's too, what what are we going to say is, is he six? I six, think they listed him at 6'6". Six, six. So they're listing him as? 6'6"? Six, six. Yeah. Three. Do you think he weighs 300? Maybe. You said that the other day. Yeah. Maybe. That's a big, 285, and, Yeah, easy. Easy. Okay. So the problem with that, you've put all that in the wrong package right. because it's too much weight to come down on those knees. Yeah, if he's 6'10", 6'11", 7' then, foot then tall, you you're like, oh, yeah. 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 You got, got Shaq. You, you know, Shaq at 320, 325, but Shaq's 7'1". But you see, as Shaq got older, didn't tr- wasn't in the shape that he needed to be he in. Was not. The injuries started to, and they started putting him down for longer periods of time. I mean, this young man is 19, and he's that. At 25, what's he going to be? Yeah. He needs to play at 260, Skip. I'm mm-hmm. sorry. Unless they really broke through, and with the new technology and the new teaching methods, they retrained him to walk, jump, land. Skip, when he goes up, he ain't thinking about jumping. He ain't thinking about landing. He's just reacting. And that's what you do. That's what you do, Skip. You, you, look, I understand that. That's fine when you're like, okay, do it like this, Ja. I mean, excuse me, it's Zion. Mm-hmm. But once you get on the court, that's out the window, Skip. Your, yeah. mem- your muscles don't remember what they always done. He's done. He jumped that way. He's walked that way far longer than he's not done it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But if he's 19, he can still be molded in some respect. With that body? Game. Well, no, no, no. His play, oh. like his mechanics of how he's going to land, that can be improved. Mm-hmm, no. You, with Skip, you go up, what you do? Shooting. You go, you, you jump up, <laughs> you jump as high as you can, you come down. You just hope you don't come down on somebody's ankle. I mean, foot. Yeah, the problem is he's so acrobatic. Yes! Okay. And he's so ambidextrous that he's going to put himself occasionally in precarious situations right. because he. he he can right. because he's that gifted. Right. So he's going to be in a precarious leaning situation mm. where he's going to get banged and bumped. Right. And he might not be able to come down with the two-point landing that right. they 
trying to teach. Yeah, they're trying to keep him, probably trying to keep him coming, laying on both legs instead of just one. Yeah. So that is scary, and I give you that. But I still say this league needs him. Oh, yeah. He's about to become not just the talk of the town, he's going to become the talk of the league. And it's Mm. going to start tonight, and I believe they're going to wind up. What's that? No, is there an announcement? I'm looking at my phone. I don't I'm see no breaking part. news. LeBron retired. You know, he'll be the talk of the league. <laughs> no, he he got body back. Yeah, you didn't guy. hear it. <laughs> Did you not hear this? Uh, you, got little, you, back. Huh? you got your little one moment. How long are you going to hold over that? Come uh, and be gone tonight. Uh, uh, at least a couple of days. Here it is. <laughs> oh, wait. Wait. Did that really <laughs> happen? <laughs> Skip, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. You really should, Skip, that you got them, that you got them <laughs> on the loop. Wait, you got them queued up. wait. <laughs> R.I.P. LeBron James, right there. Body this, bag. This is the best, Skip. This should, so be, the, this should be beneath you. Oh, oh, how can this, that happen to the king? The king just got deposed. I mean, LeBron jumped, Skip. He's actually up under the basket. How, yeah. how was he going to block it? He stick his head through? You know, uh, LeBron looked completely overmatched. He looked like year 17 LeBron. <laughs> he, he looked like old LeBron. Skip, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. A, that old goat. He, oh, he, he goat. He, he's but like see old LeBron. You'll see tonight. Huh? When he flush on R.J. Barrett and Mitchell really? Robinson. Yeah, he's going to catch both of them. You sure he's still with us? Yeah, yeah, he is. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> you don't miss no, a no, thing, no. Skip. <laughs> you, 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 you know how we try to get the old montage? Well, he last year, uh-huh. he got blocked. He let the ball go out of oh, bounds. He, he still got that one on uh. Cuba. We're not using It's not 2019 <laughs> anymore. I'm going to frame on. I'm going to frame tomorrow's box score because at the bottom, it's going to say, of the, of the Lakers stats, it's going to say LeBron James, DNP, Parentheses body bag. No, it ain't going to say that. It's going to say yeah. triple dub. Yeah. Plus, probably like plus 22. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's what I'm thinking. Either way. You thinking that too? They Skip. should win the game. Oh, they should? Yeah. I mean, I hope they do. No, you don't. You, you, what, you try to swindle me out of a case of do on the game? I try to get you a triple dub. Okay, I'll take the Knicks in 15 right now. 10. 15. Because the backdoor cover. Mm-hmm. Okay, if we have a lead by four, 15 in the fourth quarter, I win. No. 15 points. I'll take it no, right now. No, no, Case. no. <laughs> 15 going once. You know, skip, you know the backdoor the, cover. The, the Knicks are terrible. Backdoors. LeBron and AD go out, and the next thing you know, they're up 25, and they end up winning by like 14, 13. I was willing just to give you a case. No, you are you trying. Please. No mercy. Zion Williamson makes his highly anticipated NBA debut tonight against the Spurs after missing the beginning of the season with a knee injury. The hype has been off the charts for the first overall pick after his historic preseason performance. So, Shannon, what's Zion's stat line Mm. tonight? I think he's going to play somewhere around 20 minutes, Mm. maybe 22 minutes. And I got a stat line of 10, 5, 2, and 2. 10 points, 5 rebounds, 2 dunks, 2 blocks. Mm. Okay. Okay. That would he give you in 20 minutes. I, I am right with you on that because they said they're <laughs> going to play him in like four or five minute bursts. You're right. So if okay. he plays four of those, maybe 20 minutes, I got 12, six, cut maybe two assists and two steals, okay. but to your dunk issue. <laughs> I took a picture last year in Las Vegas with, I, I believe this is going to be Zion's first victim, body oh. bag victim. And I took this in the gym in Las Vegas with me and Jakob Pertle. Ah! And I fear, Yak is a really nice guy, but I, I fear he's going to be in harm's way tonight in New Orleans because I fear he might be the first victim of a Zion highlight, a big old tomahawk slam right in Jakob's face. So uh, my, yep. my thing is, Skip, who do you think he's going to guard? He, Pirtle is, what, seven, almost seven foot tall? Yeah, he's 7'1", I okay. think. Okay, yep. so LaMarcus? LaMarcus is, what, 6'10"? <laughs> yep. Or DeRozan? <laughs> I don't know. So that's a that, good question. Because so that, that's the thing. That's, yeah. that's gonna be, I wasn't thinking about who he's going to guard. I just think he's going <laughs> to slam him. Oh, you worried about who's going to guard him? Yeah. Well, that's the, the point. But but to your point, it's a very good question. Yeah. He's going to have to guard somebody. I don't know. They're going to have to play Jackson Hayes more. You know, you favors play the, can guard. You play the players. Lakers. He's going to guard JaVale. He's going to guard AD. He's going to guard Dwight. Or you're going to put him on old Goat James. Yeah. You know what? I, I think he can do all of the above. No, he's not. Yes, he can. Let's give me I think he can guard the goat. I think he can dunk on the goat. Oh, you want to see that? He ain't going to have huh? a broad, 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 Hey, you know, Bron, he's wised up now. He <laughs> says, I'm staying out of the paint. Yeah, he's going to stand away. He's going to catch somebody. Oh, he's going to catch somebody slipping. Yeah. He's going to block a dunk. Now, watch him. He's going to yeah. catch somebody. He'll block two or three dunks before the years out. Really? Yeah, I got a uh, couple. I, I feel it. I got a feeling it's going to happen. Really? Jaws dunk, maybe? 
like? I don't know about that one. Yeah. <laughs> the wait is over. We can finally see him in action. That is it for us. No mercy. Thanks for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm Jenny Taft. Join us again at the same time tomorrow morning, 930 Eastern. We'll see you then. Fox Sports. One of one. Of one. Of one. Of one.